Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the City of Delray Beach's uh, regular City Commission meeting scheduled for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022 at 4 p.m. Please call the roll. Mr. Frankel? Present. Ms. Cassell? Here. Mr. Ballston? Present. Ms. Johnson? Present. Mayor Petrolia? Here. Um, let's please stand for the pledge. Thank you. We are at agenda approval. Any additions, deletions, or substitutions? None. Jeff Brown. Yes. I, oh, yes, I you do. Okay. Is now joining. Sure. I, yes, ma'am. We, um, there was a public comment for the beach dog item. It's an attorney who's out of town, so he's listening. I'm going to text him to make sure that he mutes himself, okay. but we'll call him when it's time. Very good. What would you like? I to am going to mute myself. I am muting myself. This is Jeff Brown in attendance and muted. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are you muting yourself? Very good. I, I'd like to pull 6B for discussion. Okay, so 6B, resolution 71-22 will come off and go to... 7AA. Anyone else? They changed it. Seeing no one, entertain a motion with the motion To approve change. the agenda as amended. Second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. All right, moving on to um, no presentations, uh, comments and inquiries on agenda and non-agenda items. Uh, Mr. Moore, you are up first. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. I actually have one item before we indulge. Director of Public Works, Missy Barletto, and her commentary relative to construction process, projects and resulting inconveniences. And that is to announce that the Office of the City Manager, working closely with Director of Utilities, Hassan Hajimiri, has established a series of protocols necessary to respond to any assertions, observations relative to concerns regarding water quality. So. In other words, not only will we respond to any questions or concerns in that regard by formal commentary or report to the Office of the City Manager or that of Director Hajimeri, but in the event that any information is brought to our attention via social media or any other sources, we have proactive abilities to respond in that regard. I'm actually encouraged to this effect, ladies and gentlemen, because we began exercising this process during the past two weeks, resulting in several reviews in which the outcomes were sound water quality and, and a safe environment as a result so we will continue this trajectory and again i think it's a good practice in conjunction with our efforts to achieve provisions of the florida department of health consent order as authorized a few months ago therefore i demonstrating the ability to to be in the absolute best place we possibly can be so very encouraged in that regard and i look forward to continued direction as outlined very good thank you anyone else Anything else? I'm sorry. Um, all right, we'll move on to um, Ms. Barletto. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Missy Barletto, Director of Public Works. Um, here tonight with our, our every meeting update on construction projects. So some of these are, are old, some of these will be new information for you tonight. Um, the Atlantic Dunes Park seawall construction continues. They're making great progress in the south parking lot, but it does continue to be closed at this time. The Brant Drive Bridge is still under construction and will be through December of 22, so people are being completely routed around that. The George Bush Boulevard um, roadway project is an FDFT managed project as you know all of the planned full road closures for that project have been completed now so you can always get through on George Bush Boulevard they are single lane um, closures at this time right now they're out there constructing curb and guttering sidewalk and new pavement between Northeast 8th Avenue and Palm Trail the George Bush um, Bascule Bridge, as you know, was reopened on Friday, April 29th. It continues to be open and operating at this time. The County Engineering Department has 
has informed us that they have proposed a million dollars in design funds in their FY23 CIP budget to complete the, um, to begin the design of replacing that bridge, which is several years out in the future, perhaps seven or eight years out into the future. It will take several years of design just to um, have the new bridge design. On Homewood um, Boulevard, FDOT is also managing a roadway project. As, as you remember, we talked about when this project was, was proposed, they are um, doing a lane diet there. They're removing one lane and creating a bicycle and pedestrian path in that area. So there is one lane closed now on the north side of Linton Boulevard on Homewood Boulevard. Up until now, all of the work has has been done on the south side between Linton Boulevard, Boulevard and Old Germantown. So now they're moving into that, into the intersection with Linton. On, um, on Lake Drive, this is a Boynton Beach project. Um, south Lake Drive is, is on, the bridge on that drive had some structural issues associated with it. Um, Delray Beach actually has an interlocal agreement with Boynton Beach to provide 50% of the maintenance cost for this bridge, but Boynton Beach actually manages all of that work. So we will be um, working with them to ante up our half of the repairs to that bridge here in the near future. On Island Drive, um, Island Drive Bridge, the we are looking at needing to do a full closure of that bridge for four hours a day for several days before the end of the month. So um, we're still in discussion with the contractor how many days that they will need to do a complete closure of that bridge while they move a manhole inlet. North, Northeast Avenue streetscape is really starting to shape up right now. We're in the process of pouring the new decorative sidewalks. I invite everybody to go out there in the dead of night. They have, um, the sidewalks are concrete with, with um, colored glass in them, but they also have glowstones in them. So they glow at night, which is very cool. So for the art district, we thought that would be be uh, a decorative nice addition. In Osceola Park Phase 2, we're continuing to do various road closures in the, in the neighborhood of affected roads or Southeast 2nd Avenue, um, Southeast, um, Southeast 2nd Avenue between Southeast 10th and Southeast 7th. On Southeast 9th Street between Southeast 5th Avenue and Southeast 2nd Avenue and Southeast 8th Street between Southeast 5th Avenue and Southeast 2nd Avenue as we finish up improving the um, water and sewer and the roadway project in that neighborhood. On the reclaimed area 10, um, we had a, a little, they're working here on the street behind City Hall um, which they, they had an incident with the water main, which has City Hall on a boiled water notice. Um, and then additionally, other work is going to occur in the intersection at Northwest 2nd Avenue and Southwest 1st Street that will require that intersection to be closed and for traffic to detour around that. So now that we're we're in, uh, in the season where our winter visitors are headed back, um, back home. We're starting to do our annual maintenance projects that also come with some inconvenience. The Pride intersection is scheduled to be repainted from May 10th until May 13th, and that'll be completely closed off um, during the nighttime hours also. Um, also, not just during the day. That intersection will be closed off for those three days while we repaint the intersection. The crosswalk reconstruction last year, we did, um, we did the crosswalks on Swinton Avenue at North, um, North First Street and North Second Street. This year, we will complete that by reconstructing the crosswalk 
at North 3rd Street in Swinton. So that intersection will be closed from June 6th through June 17th while we pull up all those pavers. We lay a concrete bed and we reset the pavers inside of it to provide for future maintenance to take care of the dip that's in the road there now. Our, our annual roadway resurfacing project, we will be um, starting May 5th, starting this week, we'll be on 2nd Avenue, Southeast 2nd Avenue, and we'll be doing two blocks from Southeast 1st Street to Southeast 3rd Street on Southeast 2nd Avenue. And those, those, um, those streets will just be single lane closures while we mill and resurface those streets. There will be flaggers present, so people will still be able to travel on those roads. Um, we'll be doing the mill and resurface on Southeast 7th Avenue in the Del Rio neighborhood from Southeast 7th Street to Southeast 10th Street and also doing various neighborhood streets within the Chatelaine neighborhood this year, that before the end of May. There's one, um, one additional, this is a private construction project on Southwest First Avenue by the Sunday Village project. This is AT&T will be doing a directional bore for undergrounding utilities in that area. So the block of Southwest First Avenue that is between West Atlantic Avenue and Southwest First Street will be, um, will have single, single lane and sidewalk closures um, for the week of May 16th through May 20th. So we've, we've tried to offset all of these street closures in the downtown area so they're not happening at the same time. Um, they're at all, all different times throughout the, throughout the next month. And as always, this is how we communicate our active construction projects to, to folks in the area. And uh, I'm open to any questions. I have one. Uh, I received some information that there's um, either a notice that had gone out for A1A residents and right around Linton Bridge. Is there anything you know that's coming on to work that's going to be constructed down there? Yes, the, um, the Florida Department of Transportation has reached out to, to city staff and to area residents mm -hmm. to discuss a project that they are planning to implement um, between Linton Boulevard and um, close to George Bush Boulevard okay. where they're, they're um, improving the signalized crosswalks in those areas and they're placing sidewalk, they're redoing the roadway and they're placing sidewalk on the east side okay. of A1A okay. from, um, from Linton to just south of the Seagate Beach Club. Gotcha. They're just south of the Cash Arena Road entrance onto the beach where there is no sidewalk now. Right. So that would go from the Atlantic Dunes Park up to where it would join onto the sidewalk in front of the Seagate Club. So is that a done deal or are they actually asking for the um, uh, input? They're, um, actually, they're actually asking for public input. That meeting is coming up in the, the next couple of weeks and I am sorry, I do not remember off the top of my head what day it is. You can get that to me because I know that there are some people that are concerned or want to know more about it. I can get I can pass it on. I'll be happy Thank to do that. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Missy. Your report's been enlightening for some of us, a lot of us. Um, unfortunately, some people are not communicating with you, and I would ask through the uh, city manager that it's important not only that we talk about the city's projects, but if we could somehow or another uh, have a liaison or some connection between what's going on at the county level and at the state level, which is FDOT. Um, I don't know that it's gonna take a lot more, but if they're working in our city, we should know about it. And oftentimes, the citizens, the residents, the constituents only know about it because of what they hear right here. They don't go onto our website, but they might just be tuned in and said, oh, that's right down the street from me. And if there's a meeting mm -hmm. about the project that's about to happen, I'm sure there are lots of people mm -hmm. maybe who haven't gotten the word, didn't get the communication, knock on the door. So I don't want you to have it be a public works meeting. 
instead of a commission meeting, but it would help because it appears that all of a sudden there is a convergent mm -hmm. convergence of uh, projects here in Delray. We're not complaining, we just like to know. And in view of that, as I was driving here tonight, this afternoon, I saw a sign at Martin Luther King Drive, I wanna say Boulevard, but, and Northwest First Avenue, and I looked for it here. The directional sign or the information sign was, um, you could read it as you're, as you're driving south. So I got the impression that something is gonna happen on Northwest First Avenue. I read as fast as I could what the, the flashing signals were saying, but is that the back of the city hall? Or is, is that something, it said from May 3rd to May 18th. That's quite a lot of time for projects that's gonna happen on Northwest First Avenue. You just don't realize how busy it is on Northwest First in front of City Hall. Right. I can look into it and see specifically so it's which not your project sign. that. It's not your sign? Not mine personally, but I, that doesn't mean one of my project managers didn't put it out there. Okay, um, and I would have liked to have seen some information updated on the Lake Ida project because, believe it or not, it has changed the comings and goings of the parents at Spady Elementary. Perhaps they will continue that because now instead of having uh, parents lined up on Lake Ida in the morning and in the afternoons to pick up their children, they're staggering how they pick them up. So kindergarten, first grade at this time period, second grade, whatever. And so there's no backup onto Lake Ida as there's only one lane open anyway. Um, and you said on one of your um, screens, one of your slides rather, North Third Street did you mean Northwest 3rd slash Northeast 3rd? Well, it's the intersection at, at North 3rd Street, which on one side is Northwest 3rd Street, and on the other side is Northeast 3rd Street and That's Swinton right. Avenue. So it's, it's that intersection at North 3rd Street and Swinton Avenue. So they don't designate the directional whatever. They not, just say not North. Not in the dead center. Okay. Very good. I learned something. Thank you very much. May I quickly? I want to just say that what's happening on Lake Ida is working out beautifully, Missy. I drive that every morning to drive my daughter to school, and it's been amazing. So thank you for however that worked out. And I also, if I can take a moment to just take this away from current and talk about future, I know that um, you are such an amazing advocate for the city, and you have uh, gotten us a lot of money going forward for some projects. I think it's uh, Thomas Street, correct? And Tropic Isle. Can you just speak to that? So would, would it be improper for me to ask you to quickly speak to that? Is that the pump stations you're talking about? It's all, it's related to stormwater. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps, yes, we... And perhaps before you continue, perhaps you can also talk about the funds that we received, or she received, we received, uh, for Tropic Isles itself, unless That's, that was I coming just, up somewhere I else. I said Tropic Isle, I'm yeah. sorry. Um, sure. You. So in this last last uh, state legislature, we, through the city manager's office, we put in for a number of different projects to get funding. In our stormwater program in particular, we were extremely successful. Mm. We received $19.8 million in wow. state funding through the, through the resilience and, and um, flood improvement program that, that the governor sponsored. Um, specifically for the Tropic Isle neighborhood. In addition to that, we received 1837500 dollars, not to be specific or anything, <laughs> um, for construction of the Thomas Street pump station, which that um, that will pay for approximately half of the construction cost of that project. We are still in the running to receive. Um, federal Emergency Management Administration um, flood hazard mitigation grant dollars to pay for the con the rest of that construction. So it's it, we have potential that we can finish that project with only city design dollars being being involved in that that Amazing. particular project. And then we also received just under five hundred thousand dollars to complete putting in the tidal backflow prevention devices in all of our outfalls that 
are on the Intracoastal Waterway, which, as you know, we have issues at King Tide every year with water that backs up through our stormwater system and up into our streets. So those, um, those backflow prevention devices that we put in there are extremely expensive. So the state will be paying, and that will actually fully fund the rest of our, of our tidal backflow prevention devices. And that's, you know, that's in the stormwater arena. Our Parks and Recreation Department, if I have one second to toot their horn, they, uh, they also received just over a million dollars of state appropriations this year to support some of the projects we have ongoing at our parks. Amazing. And if I may, just quickly, because I think it's important that people understand that um, you were ahead of your time with the um, the stormwater master plan because it's now a legislative requirement, but because you got in there early, you were able to access those funds. And I really thank you and the city manager's office. Thank you so much, Missy. It's amazing. And can we do a round of applause for all of those funds? Appreciate it. Anything else? Uh, you know what? I just wanted to make a, a, a quick comment. I know we started um, doing these updates where Missy, a department head, comes in front of us every every single meeting because we had a need. We saw mm -hmm. we saw a gap. I'm I'm curious just to hear from my colleagues. Is that the plan forever to have our department head, you know, responsible for doing this presentation every single? Because I, I really don't think it's efficient. We don't require it of any other department head if we want to go to every other meeting. Um, you know, she's got a lot on her plate, and for her to put this together and present it every Tuesday night. Um, any, any? I don't disagree with that. I don't. I think we can um, direct people to the website. The information is there. I agree. I don't think we should add any extra work on her plate. Well, you know what, Missy? There are so many things that are happening around our town that actually are um, clogging how people are driving. So that's one of the reasons that we brought this up, and this was important and timely. People didn't really know where to get the information, so you coming in and doing that has been great. Things are starting to slow down a little bit. I think it's fine. Maybe if there are important issues that are coming up that, that are changing and, and going to create some uh, tr gridlock in certain areas, I think it would be very important for you to come in and, and, and mention those. But the con the reiteration every week of the same things, the projects that are going on, may, may be not as important at this stage yeah. unless there's somebody else that feels differently. And whatever yeah. you're doing with our, our PIO is working. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's what's most important is getting the word out there, coming and presenting to us and so that we know and the tens yeah. of people watching at home um, is, is important as well. But I think what you're doing with the PIO is, uh, is, is, is really important and it's effective, getting the word out. So one of the great things we have in the works is um, putting together an interactive map for our website that will actually be, people will actually be able to see where the road closures right. are on a regular basis, whether they're city projects or, mm -hmm. or private projects, or we will endeavor to do our best to include state and county projects too. Sounds great. That'd be okay. great. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm going to disagree because I don't know how many in the audience, and I'm not taking a survey, would say, yes, I go to the city's website, but I don't want to stop progress if they think it's a little too much. Missy, I've appreciated it all. I think there has there have been more since you've been telling us than there have been less. But four out of one, thank you so much. Well, I'm, 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 I'm in between. I feel like if there's something important, I want you to be in here to let us know about it ahead of time so that we can get the word out. So um, I'm, I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. OK. Very good. Great. Thank you so much, Missy. Thank you, Missy. All right, we're going to move on to public comment. Um, uh, I'm going to open up the public comment to the public. So this at this meeting is now open to public comment from anyone wishing to speak on any topic or agenda item other than a quasi-judicial item or a public hearing item. The public will have the opportunity to speak on quasi-judicial and public hearing items later in the meeting as those items are called. For public comment, you need to sign in state your name and address for the record, and you will have three minutes. So if there's anybody here that wants to speak to um, anything that is not a quasi-judicial or a public hearing item, please step forward and queue up. Sorry, I was in the middle of the, all the seats. But, uh, good evening, uh, Laura Simon with the Downtown Development Authority. Uh, good evening, everyone. I wanted just to uh, first say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are out there and um, to you all on the dais as well. Um, 
Downtown Development Authority works with our downtown. We host uh, a shopping event that all week long you can shop downtown and we'll be out on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday giving out orchids. So uh, we have some information I'll leave outside uh, for everyone. And then also on May 25th, we have our next Art and Jazz on the Avenue. So that'll take place. It's a community event. It's a way for you all to meet different um, businesses in the community in downtown as well as get to know your neighbors, have some fun, uh, dance in the streets to some great music. So that's on Southeast 3rd Avenue at Atlantic and we'll go all the way to Southeast 2nd Street. So that, and we'll be closed on that street. That's right in front of the Dollar Beach Market. So we're highlighting the South of Atlantic neighborhood. So I have some flyers for that and that's all, all the information is on our downtown Beach.com site. So might go, go there to find out all that information. And also all the different new businesses. We have quite a few new businesses that have opened up over the past several months. Um, and we were, uh, the past year it's been over uh, almost close to 100. So we're working closely to make sure that everybody's aware of that, gets to know them and keep them um, in business. And then our last, uh, my last comment is around the cleanliness of our downtown. And um, the amount we've had seen greatly, we've seen a huge increase of traffic, which is fantastic. However, that brings a lot of the other um, things that impact a successful downtown, such as more gum on our, sides, our sidewalks, more trash in our trash cans, more use in the side streets, and all the way from 95 to the beach, A1A, Federal Highway, uh, we did a, a downtown cleanup on the 22nd, and I alone picked up five big buckets from my office, which is on 4th Avenue, to the beach. Um, and it is important. We really need to all chip in and keep our downtown clean and our city clean and our um, earth safe and clean. But it is something that is a priority for our organization. Um, and I met, we had a great meeting with uh, Sammy and his team on Friday to collaborate more, look at priorities for our coming year. We're going into goal setting, as you all are as well. And I really implore you, if, if we can do everything we possibly can to get people here, but if they come here and it looks disgusting, they're never gonna come back. That's right. So we need to do what we can to um, make our city beautiful and shiny and bright all the time. So just encourage you to find funds. That department is definitely um, missing a lot of people, as I know I'm sure a lot of departments are. But, and then our still our clean and safe area is a very narrow area. We should try to look at expanding that, so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to mention to you, Laura, we were at our um, CRA meeting just recently, and we this topic came up about right. uh, clean and safe and, and cleanliness down, downtown and other areas of our town well, as well. So hopefully that'll um, be a com conversation that we'll have here as well. But Fantastic. thank you for that. Thank you. Leading it off. Any, anyone else um, for public comment? Uh, just so everybody understands, um, you guys are, I think, smarter than I, I, I can imagine that it is a quasi-judicial hearing for anybody that's coming here to talk about the beach dog, so you want to wait for that. But anybody who has anything that's not on the agen agenda um, as a public hearing or quasi-judicial hearing, please step forward. You can speak for three minutes. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kenya Cheney Madison. I reside at 301 Northwest 7th Avenue. Um, lifelong resident, however, today I stand before you as the Senior Director of Healthier Delray Beach, um, the proud Senior Director of Healthier Delray Beach. Um, earlier this afternoon, we received a proclamation from the City Commission um, to recognize May as Mental Health Awareness month and trauma-informed care month in the city of Delray Beach. In the year 2016, Healthier Delray Beach and students at Atlantic High School and Village Academy started the Get Your Green On campaign to simply bring greater awareness to the fact that May is Mental Health Awareness Month and the associated color is green. And in the years to span the time in between, we have grown by leaps and bounds. The county has sent down proclamations of the municipalities and neighboring cities. And we've got partners that have come on board from coast to coast. And we're really proud of that um, to bring awareness to our community, um, to show that behavioral health is important, emotional well-being is important. Um, because you, you got to be here. We all face challenges. We're all happy to be back in person and seeing one another. But um, some of us are carrying things that are a bit much for us to handle alone. And you got to be here to problem solve. So 
it, we, we have a network of solutions. And if you would like to reach out to us, I'm available. My name is Kenya Madison. My phone number for Healthier Delray Beach is 561-703-8691. I can be emailed at kenya.delray at htpbc.org. And I want to thank our pioneers, steering committee members, Ms. Angela T. Williams and Ms. Yvonne Odom for being present. Thank you to the mayor and the city commission for um, allowing us to stand beside you as we serve the residents, and it's my pleasure. Um, and I'm just going to end with a really corny joke and say, aren't you glad you got your green on? <laughs> <laughs>
to the west, to the higher, drier, sandy areas off the coast. And I think that might be coming this direction. Um, in Miami, they, one, one investor or, or some of the real estate um, writers have called this investing in the ridge. Now, I'd like to take this opportunity for a very short lecture in geology. This ridge consists of Pleistocene quartz sands that wash down from the Appalachian Mountains during various sea level uh, rises. Uh, overlaying the Anastasia limestone, Miami limestone on the east coast, which overlays a piece of the tectonic plate, Florida uh, particularly, appeared about 200 uh, million years ago. Now, what I'm forecasting, I don't want to frighten you, is that we have so many people moving here from the north that they'll be putting a lot of weight on the peninsula. It's going to break loose, get caught in the Gulf Stream, turn, wash the shore up north, and we will be paying state real estate taxes in New Jersey. <laughs> That's why they call him the man of reason. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Madam Mayor, the commission, staff, I'm here. I'm Angie Gray. I live at 3765 Riverside Way, Delray Beach. And I am so excited to be here because we are going to finally finally have some type of redevelopment on West Atlantic Avenue. Mr. James T. and his wife, Frankie, are going to be building um, a, well, building a house. I don't know how many stories yet. We'll be building commercial space and some redevelopment with affordable housing and workforce housing. And so well, I'm here today because they've been running into a little bit of issues with some, maybe some piping and some different things on their property, but they have about four uh, properties that they're going to be having in this project. It's kind of a big project for them as a um, private owner, property owner, business owner here. And so I'm asking the city commission if they could give some guidance, maybe have someone help them that they could meet with on a regular basis to help move their project forward so that we could get some affordable housing, workforce housing, and some more commercial space in the city of Delray Beach. So I'm asking for that. Um, Mr. James T., I think you're next. Uh, to speak a little bit, but um, he's here himself, so he just want to say something for a few minutes. But I'm asking that you will have some type of staff so that this project won't be delayed. Um, they do have um, some contracts in play, but it will be depend on now what they can do. So we'd like for them to move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. My name is James Thomas. Uh, I own the property at 400 West Atlantic Avenue, Delray. Uh, I live at 10841 Anderson Lane. That's in Lake Worth Beach, 33449. Um, I'm excited about what can potentially happen. I have, my wife and I, we have been hoping to leave a legacy here in Delray. I came to Delray in 1969 and uh, have been working with some wonderful people. And in the Northwest and Southwest community, we really do believe that the biggest brand in this city is Delray Beach. And with that being the biggest brand, we'd like to all be a part of the growth of it. I have several properties uh, starting at 37 Southwest 5th Avenue in Delray Beach. Thanks to Mr. Weidman and his wife, we were able to acquire 400, 404, and 402 West Atlantic on Atlantic Avenue, Southwest side, and myself and Checkers, uh, we, we're there. So we're looking to come from 5th uh, in front of... Uh, strong funeral home to come east uh, to fourth and come north to Atlantic. And yes, uh, with a group, Riva, out of uh, Broward County, we are hoping to see what you will allow us uh, to build so that we can have affordable housing as well as workforce uh, in that particular area. And we just love for the guidance of uh, the city to help us to make that happen. And uh, we've, we've made a personal commitment to family and to community that for as long as we're here, we're going to try and serve because we believe that success uh, comes through service. And that's why I'm here today. So thank you so very much for anything that you can do. Uh, we'll be reaching out to meet with various people uh, for guidance um, to whom much is given, much is required. And we've been blessed and we want to be a blessing to our city. Very good, thank you. So I have a question. Um, well, it would be, I guess, maybe even to the the board. We had a um, liaison 
program with the CRA at some point. Did that? I don't. I don't. I, I mean, because of COVID, I don't know if it's still in effect or if that's not really there. Uh, that isn't in the CRA district as well. Mm -hmm. I was also thinking of the program we have for affordable housing mm -hmm. in the building department, where they get kind of a, a fast track and a, yep. you know, a, yep. extra assistance for us. So I think there's a few okay. different things. All right. So we'll figure it out. I just wanted to see if that's even a possibility as well. I mean, if he needs uh, guidance, that might be we might be able to do it in a two two pronged sure. fashion. Okay. Very good. Madam Mayor, if I may, ladies yes. and gentlemen. So we'll make this a topic of our executive leadership team meeting tomorrow, given the scope of the project and the momentum moving forward, and we'll do what we can administratively to proceed accordingly. Very good. Thank you. Anyone else? No other comments? All right. I'm going to close out public comment, and we're going to move on to the consent agenda for approval as amended. Motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Okay, we have one item that moved from 6B to 7AA resolution 71-22, I believe. Commissioner Johnson, you pulled yes. that? Yes. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, the Palm Beach County League of Cities briefly touched on the, the settlement monies that uh, have come down from the settlement of the opioid uh, cases to the various states, then down to the county. And all of a sudden, I got the strange feeling that that was as far as it was going to go because all of a sudden they're talking about a, um, a drug or rehabilitation czar. And of course, nothing is fleshed out until it's over and we have no input. So, for, and they're getting a little tired of me there at that meeting. Because every time they talk about it, I say, well, I guess the people who started the entire lawsuit expended thousands of dollars to make sure that it was not going to fail, had it then be um, joined by other different places, go to a state that did not even have the problem, have it settled there, and monies gathered, however they were gathered. And now we're not even going to get a red penny, I believe. So I just wanted you to know that there is a movement afoot to do something at the county level so that all of the money will be doled out to the various municipalities, whether they're a member of the League of Cities or not. I'm not saying that this problem isn't pervasive throughout the county, but I would dare say since Delray has had, and I don't know if we still do, uh, we've gotten the moniker of being the drug drug capital of the world that you would think that we would have by now at least given some guidance as to how much we are or are not going to receive. Um, when our outside counsel was here, uh, Mr. Dearman, he actually, and I can provide it to you again, there is an allocation amount that was given to each city. I see the mayor nodding because oh, yeah, she I saw remember the number. Understanding that there are some areas that are around us that didn't have any problems and they're getting more than we are. So, understandably, I, it's 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 disappointing. But there's nothing we can do about no. it. There's absolutely nothing. I think so. the mayor met with Mr. Dearman and yes. they attempted to, um, you know, try to lobby to get the city mm -hmm. more funds. And remember. The money that we obtain from any of these settlements, it will never be for reimbursement purposes. So all of the money that the city spent on these on, on the opioids, opioid ec epidemic, we'll never see that reimbursement. This is for abatement going forward. Right. So to buy Narcan for our police and fire departments, if the city were to have um, a counseling group that came in, we could provide them with grant funding. But you know, we had always been under the impression, at least at the onset, that that money would be to um, you know reimburse the taxpayers who had to essentially fund all these operations during that epidemic. And it was made very clear early on that that could not be a basis for that, those settlement funds. And they actually provide us with an exhibit list telling us exactly how the money can be used. Some of the money is very starting to trickle in. I know. Um, it will be over a period of years. We will not get a lump sum. Um, and, you know, candidly, it is nominal. It's, it's nothing like what we would have expected, but it is something that's coming into the city and at a minimum will at least allow our police and fire to utilize that money if, in fact, the issue um, were to arise to the level that it was before again. And, and let's not forget this money is coming not, uh, it's coming from um, 
companies that basically were taking advantage of citizens and causing it. It was they, they were creating a bigger problem um, without really looking at how it was affecting those persons. So it's punitive from that perspective. Um, however, unfortunately, it doesn't trickle down in a way that we can, you know, use it towards whatever we, we need, we want to use it for, towards. It can only be used for specific things moving forward. And I could understand that. My uh, objection and reasoning as to why it just, I guess the good word is irks, me is that now there was going to be someone at the county level wherein there was not anything before and it's the helplessness of we have the problem here in Delray Beach I don't know who's going to better be able to I'm sure it's not going to change because deep roots have grown into our community wherein we have organizations that have established their businesses here in fact there's a um a large building being built on Linton Boulevard right now, Linton and Military, that is uh, devoted to that uh, industry. So I was just curious as to whether or not everyone knew that I believe the name and the title is uh, Drug Czar, County Drug Czar. So perhaps we can have a better liaison with the city manager with this new Drug Czar, whoever he or she may be. And just for clarity, this, all this resolution does is allow us to process these settlements more quickly. Um, I will always update you uh, once a settlement comes through and the manager um, authorizes it, but the commission has already authorized us to move forward with the settlement and the allocation agreements. This is just when the agreements come forward, somebody from the city has to sign off on it. Got it. Very good. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'm ready Chain to vote on it. Motion to approve. Second. All the roll, please. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Okay, moving on to um, our regular uh, agenda items, and we are going to 7A, which is Resolution 58-22. This is a quasi-judicial hearing. Do you want, you want to, are you reading anything in for the resolution or no? All right, I'm going to go ahead and start with the quasi-judicial hearing um, uh, rules. This hearing shall be conducted in accordance with quasi-judicial rules. The applicant and the city shall be allowed 20 minutes each to present their case. The public will be allowed to speak for three minutes each or a maximum of six minutes if the person represents an organization or a group of people who are present but agree not to speak. The city commission staff and the applicant may be allowed to cross-examine a witness. The city or the applicant will be allowed to offer rebuttal testimony. The decision to approve or deny an application or appeal may not legally be made upon personal reviews as to whether the project is a good project or not, nor may, may a decision be based on the number of citizens who support or oppose a particular project. The law requires that all the decisions must be made on the basis of whether the project meets the requirement of law, the comprehensive plan, and the land development regulations. At this point, if there's anybody here that wants to speak to this issue, please stand and be sworn in. And that includes individuals who plan on making public comment. Anybody? Anybody speaking? Okay, and I do. Very good. I was going to ask that the gentleman on the phone <laughs> on be it. sworn in as well. Okay, at this point. The gentleman, the, the, the gentleman says I do. Yes, I, we heard you. Thank you, sir. Um, we are enter the project um, file into the record, and we're going to talk about disclosure of ex parte communication with the city commission. I'll start down here with the. Any the communications on the city server? Vice Deputy Vice Mayor. Same with me. Uh, I met with. Uh, <laughs> representative and whatever I got on the city server as well. Okay. Sure. I've had conversations over the past few years, but since it's been on the agenda, I haven't. Okay. And Commissioner? Yes, I've everything that's on the server via communications between the residents, et cetera. And I did uh, two personal visits out to the location of the business. Okay. I have not been on, uh, to a visit. I have had some um, personal phone calls um, from... Randy Walden, I believe, was a personal phone call, and um, there were maybe another, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, otherwise, everything that I have is on the, um, the server. And I should Can I say add to mine? I'm sorry. I also got a text from Randy, but I didn't 
uh, think of it as advocating necessarily in one direction or another. And the gentleman standing back there, I actually spoke to him in the street one day a long time ago when I was okay. driving by. Very good. Anything yes. else? Yes, Thank I you. was going to say visiting also, one of the uh, visits included speaking with the uh, owner of the business. And I had a phone call that would not be on the server uh, from one of the um, advocates of the community. And Thank you. Also, um, Mr. Costello, I spoke with you too. Thank you. All right, very good. Um, so did we enter the file, please. Good evening, Anthea Geniotis, Development Services Director, for the record, and I'd like to enter file number 2022-083 into the record. Uh, Mr. Costello is here on behalf of the applicant with a presentation. Very good. Good evening, Commissioner, Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. Moore, community. Uh, my name is Jeff Costello, here representing Beach Dog Daycare, um, JC, Jeff Costello, JC Planning Solutions, Delray Beach, Florida. Uh, before I get started on the presentation, uh, Ms. Roselli just had a quick brief statement to make to everyone in the room. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, Mayor. City Commissioners, City Manager, staff, and members of the community. I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to the Commissioners and staff for what has transpired in the past regarding Beach Dog Daycare. This has been a huge learning experience for me that could have been approached in a much different manner. And I appreciate everyone's patience and understanding. And I'm sorry, I'm emotional. Um, not because I'm passionate about Beach Dog. It's just I got some traumatic news today about a family member, so it's all just like adding up. I would like to thank the city commissioners for approving the ordinance, providing clarity, and addressing a need for domestic animal services. It is desperately needed in Delray. There were comments made towards the commissioners during the amendment process that were inappropriate, unnecessary, and for that I am sorry. I would like to take this opportunity to personally thank Anthea, wherever she is, um, and her team for all their hard work and time associated with the creation of the regulations and during this process. I never meant in my past comments that I was given wrong information by Anthea. That was not the case. I was not able to elaborate on that. I had a mentor. Um, that opened two previous dog daycares that was very successful and I blindly and naively trusted her. It was not from Anthea or the staff. So for that, I'm very sorry. Um, thank you to Code Enforcement. They've been nothing but professional, courteous, and kind every time they came by Beach Dog and all the city staff, their hard work and dedication to the city. Once again, my sincerest apologies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Roselli. Um, this, what we're here for this evening, and there's a, there's a lot of backup and a lot of history related to this project that you all are aware of. It's in the staff report, and and the community, everybody here knows. And so, what this, what we're here tonight is to move forward, in and and address the the use itself and obtain the appropriate approvals to establish this this project that can coexist in harmony with the community. This is the location map. There's Beach Dog, as you're all familiar with. To the north is Granger's. To the right is, is, um, is oops, whoa. Oh, man, already. Bottom, 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 jeez. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to, okay. The law offices uh, and vet clinic to the south. And then there's a uh, single family residential and a duplex to the west. Uh, this, as you see, uh, is a situation where, in most cases, you have an alley separating commercial and residential. In this case, there is none. Uh, it's just pictures of the property uh, on subject property. The, the adjacent Grangers to the north, as well as the law office to the south, to the east, vacant property, and the board, and, uh, Bank of America to the west, two single-family uh, single homes. 
Um, back. Okay, okay. So the conditional use request before you is to establish a domestic animal services in a pet hotel uh, with pet service as an accessory use subject to the regulations that were recently adopted in October 2021. The, the operations include daytime boarding, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., overnight boarding from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., Monday through Sunday. Pet services will be provided from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Drop off is primarily, primarily 7 to 11 and pick up between 4 and 7. Uh, they, they have a, a situ when they pick up and drop off, it's more of a handoff. It's not even people go into, the, into there's, a, there's a, a canopy, a quick handoff, and folks are on their way. Um, the overnight boarding accommodate no more than 20 dogs, and the outside activity is limited to one, one pet at one animal at a time as, re as required by code. Withdrawn, we heard the community, we, we heard what was not desired, the, request, the waiver request to allow outdoor use area at this location has been withdrawn and there is no outside use area. With regard to this facility, the exterior approved, of course there's the conversion to the, uh, to the uh, proposed use, there's installation of, so if I get this right, there it goes. All right, we got a, a, a wood fence along the west property line, board on board, abutting the residential uh, properties, provision of 15 parking spaces, which really, you know, we initially submitted a proposal to just have 13, trying to meet code. But then again, if, if, the, if the commission choose to approve this, which we hope they do, that maybe we continue to work with SPRAB on maybe not providing, providing uh, the two additional spaces we were going to, but it's just a matter of just representation. That's what's before. The, the, the trips indicate no need for 15. Uh, associated landscaping and site lighting, which if there is some site lighting, this would be enhanced. The interior improvements, significant. Add a new sound, sound insulated partition along the west side, interior to the building, providing additional buffering to the residential properties. Add new sound insulated walls along the north and east side of the building, uh, floor to ceiling. Add new impact insulated doors and windows. There's a door, only windows are adjacent to Granger's, and on the east side, those are all impact uh, insulated doors and windows. Uh, their interior improvements include accommodation for the, um, the uh, on-site attendant, and the overnight boarding activity is limited to the east and the south side. This is a concrete block wall. The hours of operate. So domestic animal regulations recently adopted. This pr proposal complies with the regulations. The hours of operation as stated above are consistent with what are permitted for the daytime boarding. The pet service will be provided from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and a drop off again as stated above as stated on the screen. Uh, with regard to the uh, fully enclosed, we just mentioned how this would be, this would comply with the regulations. Uh, the new wall, the, the insulated wall, the sound transmission class 55 plus, that's significant. That's, that's, you, can, you can hardly hear anything if you hear anything at this, at, at, with that. Uh, the new impact, again, insulated doors and windows are adjacent to uh, the existing commercial property to the north of Granger's as well as Federal Highway. Um, the, as far as the, the regulation continue, outside activity is limited to necessary outdoor one animal at a time. Drop off, again, as stated, no outside use area. As far as the regulations regarding disposal of concert, uh, carcasses, they're being prohibited, we comply, parking requirements comply. Overnight boarding, again, there will be an on-site attendant present at all times. We will comply. This is not a mixed-use building. And then we have submitted an emergency preparedness plan uh, and also dealing with the on-site attendant as well as a portable generator, uh, generator if there's any issues uh, with power loss. Surrounding zoning. So we know this is a recently, this whole Federal Highway Corridor recently rezoned to CBD. 
a mixed use district. It directly abuts a single family district. And, and as I said, there is, issue, uh, there is no alley in between. However, these, this building is about 100 feet from the, the properties ab directly abutting the residential and 150 feet from this property there. Building to building, that's approximate. With regard to, uh, I submitted a public records request for the uh, periods between November 1st, 2021 and April 24th, 2022, and there were no code violations uh, were issued regarding noise. So we, again, we've heard the issues and have taken the measures to, to prevent those issues from continuing. Conditional use findings. Positive findings can be made with section 245E5 that Beach Dog Daycare Facility will not have a significantly detrimental effect upon the stability of the neighborhood within which it is located or hinder development or redevelopment of nearby properties. Again, for the purpose, for the reasons stated previously, no outside area, fully enclosed solid core doors and, and, and walls, um, windows as well, additional interior insulated wall, private six foot privacy fence, minimal traffic generated with direct access from Federal Highway, no impacts on residential areas, and required parking site lighting accessibility requirements are met. I do want to note the stability in the neighborhood. We have seen significant cells in the Osceola Park neighborhood, which cannot go unnoticed. And what um, was previously acquired by particular entities that, that may have destabilized the air, we are seeing a switch where there's been the private property owners, homeowners purchasing these properties. I'm, I'm going to try to go back real quick and just to state, um, oops, geez, oh, too far again. Damn. Oh. oh, man. I gotta get used to this thing. See, I don't use this that often. So, for instance, these properties, three at this intersection, these were average sales price, these three homes at approximately, over, it was over $800,000. Just to the west of, of, of Beach Dog, one sold for over 800, another one sold for over 500, almost 600,000, and there's one on the market, this duplex of approximately a million. The block to the south, these homes were smaller lots. They sold uh, uh, in primarily in 2021 or were acquired in 2021 and one in March 2022 in, in the mid 400s to 500. So there's activity happen, happening within the community, a positive impact on the community uh, thanks to the improvements that have been made, infrastructure, as well as there is the demand and need for housing. So as we move on, required findings, LDR section 3.1.1, positive findings can be made. There's a, there's a housing element policy stated within the, within the staff report based on a proposed interior and exterior improvements, limitations on the use, compatibility with adjacent neighborhoods has been illustrated with respect to noise, odors, dust, traffic volumes, and circulation patterns. And for these reasons, we respectfully request approval of this conditional use request. Um, we have a few more minutes, and with that, we would like to show uh, just a few videos. The first would be mine. Uh, oh, so it's Jeff. Two minutes of mine, and then Jen, if you can uh, go ahead over there to present yours. Thank you. Jeff. So these, these particular videos were taken April 11th, 15th, 16th, 26th, 29th, 30th, times range, 6.30 p.m., 6 o'clock. Oh, this is, Jen, go ahead on this one. This is on Easter, one of Easter. our busiest. Yeah. This is Easter, one of our busiest holidays of the year. Easter weekend. 
of our busiest days of the year. Hi, Steve. He has anger problems. So it's a cool day at Beach Dog. Barking dogs are bored dogs. These dogs are not bored. These are also dogs that are not pent up in kennels You're all day okay. where they would be going stir crazy. They have an outlet. Um, um, mine, of course, is, is not on the thing, but, but that's my, probably my fault. Um, in any case, I did, just to testify, I did uh, go to the site. I mentioned those dates previously um, and, and did uh, take video. I did not hear noises. There was, in, in one case, I did hear one. It was in the daytime as I was walking next to the front of the building or the entrance doors. And it was this very, it was like a, a small Wait, yelp, that? yelping dog. And then these are gens from the security camp. So this is the same video that Mr. Wolf was walking on our property that he showed at the zoning board meeting. This is from my security camera and what it caught. There's a dog barking. We have three minutes. This is Mr. Wolf on Federal Highway, same time, recording. This is Mr. Wolf, five days later, recording. This is the backside of Mr. Wolf recording in my front entrance and what you can be heard in the back. This is Thanksgiving, one of our busiest holidays. This is Christmas, one of our busiest holidays. This is Christmas Eve, busiest holidays. Mr. Wolf is having a party, you'll probably hear people talking. Valentine's Day weekend, again, another extremely busy holiday. This is 1130 at night. Three, four, I don't know if it's St. Patty's Day weekend, another busy holiday. Easter, 4.45 or 5.45, busiest time pickups. He 
Easter weekend or week at night, 1.57 a.m. This is how we take dogs out. running out of time and I think that's the last one thank you and uh, again we feel that we've provided the burden of proof that this will be can coexist and be harmonious with the surrounding area and we respectfully rec uh, request approval of this condition thank you very much thank you okay I'm going to let him click the staff one, and then I'm going to, okay. So the other thing is Mr. Costello did send another video. It was quarantined by our system, so they're actually working. I had two with your name on it, so I thought they'd all come through. So they're trying to see if they can download the other one. It's quasi-judicial, so we don't want to shortchange him. Sure. Um, so, Raphael, you're getting an email with the link in a minute. Um, so, okay. So just um, rather quickly, I don't want to try to go over um, things that have already been done, but for the record, um, since it is quasi-judicial, this is uh, located at 820 Southeast Fifth Avenue. The current zoning district is Central Business District within the South Paris Subdistrict, which was recently adopted. At the time that this procedure started, it was zoned GC. CBD references GC uses, so they are in essence the same. But if you'll recall, at the time that the business started, um, the code only contained kennels in industrial districts, pet grooming, kind of wherever retail were, was located, and veterinary clinics. And it really hadn't evolved to the level of pet services that we see now. So we worked on an, an ordinance um, at this commission's direction. And so let's go over what the rules are today. Um, first of all, we did add a definition of what a domestic animal is um, in, the, in the light of the LDRs of the city. And we have um, defined domestic animal services, which encompass a broad range of animal and pet uses. And then those uses are broken down to include the ones that we've had before, like veterinary clinics, but then added new uses like the pet hotel, which accommodates overnight boarding, um, generally pet services, which could include daytime businesses with the wide range, expanding grooming to include training and daytime boarding and, and dog, doggy daycare. Um, many of the groomers um, generally had already, you know, you dropped your dog off to get his hair cut and then, you know, the dog's there for four hours because you're doing something else. So it was sort of a natural evolution of that use to begin with. Um, as the applicant stated, the outside use area um, for, um, is no longer requested. Um, it's clearly kind of been improved, and if this use is approved, um, SPRAP will be taking up the physical and other changes that are proposed for the business and, and will resolve indicating the use area, um, which, is a, which will be limited then to um, you know, drop off, pick up, outside area uses, and then also um, walking um, a, an animal, one animal at a time on a leash. Without that outdoor use area, that's the only way they can use it. So we've already gone through quite a bit of background. Um, the building itself was constructed in 1973. Um, initially, when the business opened, we're, we're, we're back right at the beginning of 2020. Um, the zoning certificate of use was approved for the grooming. Um, and we specifically wrote as a staff on the comment that um, dog daycare pet boarding was not included in the approval because it wasn't allowed by the zoning district. and. Um, this is where we've had some miscommunication um, in terms of, you know, I thought we were really clear, but it wasn't necessarily, um, according to the applicant, um, my writing that she was reading when she was moving forward. Um, January 8th, the BTR was approved for dog and pet grooming, um, and the business opened in, um, in that same month. Um, a second ZCU came in in May uh, for the dog daycare and boarding and was subsequently denied. Um, and then um, code enforcement action started. There were several noise complaints um, at that time. And I, I do think as you're considering this, it's important to figure out how active the backyard was during the noise complaints 
and how loud is it now? There have been changes as this process has happened. Um, so in October of 2021, we expanded the code to better define and regulate the um, more modern um, animal uses in, in um, the city. And um, code enforcement is, 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 remains active until there's a resolution at some level here. So the proposed operations are, are pet services, which include daytime boarding, and the applicant's given you a good overview of the hours. I think it's important to make a distinction between, there are really two uses that are both conditional. Um, the overnight boarding is a separate use in the code, so um, while the request is for all of it, you know, it, it is something you should consider that there's two choices there. The use of an outside use area beyond one dog on a leash at a time has been withdrawn. Um, as stated, there is a, a, a set of site plan modifications that are coming in with this application that will go on to SPRAB um, once there's a, if there's an approval at this level. Um, it has been through TAC with staff at one time. Um, there is no handicapped parking space in the lot right now, so ultimately there's restriping proposed, which results in loss of one space, um, but it would um, meet sort of those requirements at this point, and SPRAB will take action on that at a later time. There's other associated improvements with this use. A generator, that was one of the concerns when the code was going through, what happens if the power goes out, we wanna be sure any animals that are captive, you know, have some, um, you know, it's Florida, it's hot, we have hurricanes, if the electricity is out, we wanna be sure the animals are well cared for. Other pro plans like that, the applicant has um, described and are documented in the backup with this file. Um, ultimately, the conditional use findings that the board has to make is that the, the conditional use request will not have a significantly detrimental effect upon the sp stability of the neighborhood within which it will be located and that it will not hinder development or redevelopment of nearby properties. So it is located on the border where it's the back of um, mixed use zoning, backing up to single family residential. The two parcels that are immediately adjacent to this are homesteaded parcels and have been both homesteaded for well over 10 or 15 years. Um, so that's the biggest concern to the north is Grangers um, and then it's, it's surrounded by um, other, other mixed use, ultimately office and, re and restaurant. Um, chapter three findings as always apply related to the land use, concurrency, consistency, and compliance with the LDRs. Um, beyond the conditional use, other issues of compliance would fall to a site plan level. Um, there was a TPS letter um, stating that the business meets um, the county's um, traffic standards um, that was issued in February. Um, it's an existing building. There's changes in solid waste, but nothing that is particularly um, taxing on the city's resources. Um, the backup contains um, different parts of the comp plan that talk about fostering business, but also talk about protecting housing, which is ultimately the issue before you. The appendix in um, the attached planning and zoning board report provides a full analysis of the other requirements related to this use, like the generator and other things we've talked about. Um, the other um, issues that are physical, um, again, would fall to the purview of the SPRAB, and if approved, that site plan would appear, would appear as an appealable report on this commission's um, agenda. So the considerations before you ultimately is that, um, you know, the, the difference between a commercial, or the transition between a commercial business and a um, residential or single family home um, does call for either landscaping with a fence or a solid masonry wall. Um, there was some discussion at the planning board and it, at staffs as to whether a more substantial perimeter barrier might help with sound. Um, and then also, ultimately, the decision is whether the proposed pet services and pet hotel are compatible with the nearby residential uses. You could consider the two proposed uses separately. Um, and are there any other impacts or regulations that could help mitigate the impacts? Ultimately, the most significant one is noise, and, and how will that, has that issue been resolved with ceasing the outside use or not? Um, the code enforcement went out last week. The outside use area is still set up, but there was no activity observed, so, you know, ultimately, um, it either should be removed or shown on the site plan if this um, use is approved. Um, and then finally, we rarely do this, but 
you know, another option is to possibly approve the use for a specific time period um, to test the soundproofing, which is part of the LDRs, and then come back with a required modification to extend it into a permanent use at another time. Um, these are just um, thoughts to help you in your deliberation, and I'm here if you have any questions. Thank you. Okay, so at this point, we're going to open it up to the public. So anybody who would like to speak on this issue, please step forward, state your name, your address. You'll have three minutes. Um, make sure that you indicate that you were sworn in before you start to speak. Yes, ma'am. Very good. My name's Stephen Ferguson. I live at 823 Southeast 4th Avenue. I'm the house directly behind the doggy daycare. Uh, I don't know where she got the films of no barking, but... I live there. There is barking. There hasn't been lately because she doesn't have the dogs, at, or the, the person doesn't have the dogs outside, okay? Now they're walking on our streets on the sidewalk and back, okay? Um, and they are from that establishment. I'm concerned about the noise. I'm concerned about the smell, okay? And I'm concerned about the situation that we're starting where my property value is going to go down because I got a doggy daycare center behind me that's open 24 7 to me that's not right it wasn't brought in in a proper way it was not designated for what she was using they were using it for and it's I'm, I'm, I'm just asking you not to approve it because in my opinion it's going to be detrimental to our neighborhood. There's no way of getting around that. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, and one thing, any commissioner that has been involved in the helping of this situation should recuse themselves from voting on it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. My name is Darcy Newman. I actually live in Boca but I come to your neighborhood from actually Highland Beach and Boca, and I've brought many of my friends to give our good money into Delray Beach. Give your address. I'm sorry? Give your address. 2901 South Ocean Boulevard. And by the way, people walk their dogs in front of my lawn too, and I don't say anything. But I'm going back to more legal issues on the decimal, which is what this was brought up up to the council in the first place. The decimal rating in Delray Beach currently is non-existent as your attorney for the city has let you know and they're working on that right now in the city as well to do it for establishments for restaurants, for music and for everything. So let alone a dog ordinance for a decimal. A dog, a dog bark is about 70 decimals which is what they're currently at right now saying if they're 100 yards away and it goes on for longer than two hours that's when it becomes a detriment to your ears and the neighboring surrounding environment there are barriers between the doggy daycare and the homeowners as well as the business I've been to Granger's and I've heard people talking louder than I've ever heard a dog bark um, number two when he was talking about the dropping off in the parking, I've not once ever seen more than three cars there I back into the space they take him out of my window they come out, it's like bringing your kid to daycare center. They have gone above and beyond, jumped through hoops, which only dogs should do. They have took on, taken on a financial burden that they were not looking to incur to satisfy the needs of not only the community, but the commission here, and they have done that. I think it would be wrong to do, propose to do a, a set limit for a certain amount of time for them to put all the financial um, monies into making all these improvements for them to to it be taken away later. So should it be granted? It should be granted as a permanent thing. He has done wonders for that little area. I remember Delray when I was growing up and it was, you didn't even walk in there. Now I'm happy to take my family, my kids, which my son just flew in from college today and I haven't even seen him because I'd rather be here supporting a woman owned local business. And for me to have that look for a commission to take away someone who's established something so great for not only me, but for everybody else, our pets are like our children and tagging onto the mental health. You know, dogs have taken on a special meaning lately, not because they're not our pets anymore. I have mine as an ESA dog, and I tell you, it's got me off pharmaceuticals, which I know this town is looking for everybody to get off pharmaceuticals and bring that level down. And one way of doing it is having our pets. They are our 
pharmaceuticals. They are being taken care of now by a facility that is helping us stay less stressed, stay off pharmaceuticals, and know that they are being taken care of in an area that's safe and healthy in an environment that they're being well cared for. The fact that they even took away the outside area is preposterous because I think that was brilliant and these dogs are great and their help for us and for the community is great. Thank That's you. it. I'm sorry, were you sworn? I'm sorry? Were you, Did you sworn? were you sworn in? I was sworn in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm uh, Jen Grasso. I live at 235 Northeast First Street. Um, I'm here to support. And you were sworn in? Uh, yes, I was. Thank you. Um, I'm here to support uh, Beach Dog Daycare. And while I can't say enough good things about the quality of services provided by Beach Dog and Jen Roselli's talent as a dog whisperer, having attended numerous zoning board meetings and commission meetings, I've grown to learn and respect her abilities as a responsible business owner. Um, in my prior life, I was a chief risk officer for a multi-billion dollar mutual fund. I'm hardwired to think in terms of risks risk to and from a business, risk to your clients and communities, and risk to compliance rules and regulations. I viewed every transaction for several years that way. I view this transaction the same way. Beach Dog fills an important service to the downtown community. As a small business, it exemplifies the type of business that makes downtown Delray special. It's a place where everyone knows your name, they know your dog's name, they know your car, which gets you in and out really fast. You're treated with care and concern. They know things that are going on in your personal life, which is incredibly heartwarming to live in a town like that. Establishing a small business during COVID was extremely challenging. Dealing with evolving zoning laws has only added to those challenges. Um, Ms. Roselli has confronted these requirements head on. She has made the necessary interim changes as required, and she is positioned to meet the changes going forward. She does respect the neighbors in the neighborhood, M mindful of noising, as has been mentioned, she closed down her backyard. For example, uh, recently when it came to her attention that an individual was trespassing on her property as evidenced by security cameras, shining a flashing light into the building, provoking dogs, which will cause a dog to potentially bark. She hired Delray, Delray police off duty um, for several hours. I believe there's are over 50 hours of reports that did not cite any sound or noise ordinance. Um, she took the time and effort and expense. She has invested money, as noted here, to meet the code requirements. And as a business, having the full complements of service, both hoteling and boarding, will be critical from a cost-benefit perspective. Um, the, without the Without having both sides of business in your full complement, she's at risk of having to close. This would leave multiple residents with little options in the area. I'm not too sure many places offer daycare and boarding in this area that have the same kind of environment, not institutional kenneling. We can go to Boynton. We can go to Boca. That's welcome. There are places there. Not practical for those of us who have to drop dogs off if going to and from work. Or alternatively, there is home-based doggy daycare within a quarter of a mile of her. I happened to rent a house. It was 20 yards from the house that I rented. Thank you. So I do request that you submit. Also, there were videos. I don't know who has them, but we did. Okay, well, submit. you've got three minutes. And, okay. But let me ask you a question. Um, where what you gave an address? What 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 city are you from? Uh, Delray Beach, 235 Northeast First. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Annette Gallagher. I live at 823 Southeast 4th Avenue. I live right behind the business that we're okay. talking about. Um, and I have been sworn in. So. Thank you. Uh, I spoke at the Planning and Zoning Committee meeting, and uh, I talked about the 300 feet separation requirement. That was not met. I still believe that 300 feet separation is needed because we have a fence, it's just a, a you know, thin wood fence that separates our properties from um, commercial properties to our residential property. And in, in 2020, when the owner of Beach Dog started business, there was lots of barking as was shown on the videos in the planning meeting. Um, 
it did happen. These, uh, you know, I'm kind of, when I see the, the, the improvements, that, that gives me optimism. I'm glad that's happening. But it's not taking responsibility for the fact that we have been impacted by this in the past. We are not the bad people here. We, we want to have our properties safe, just like anybody else wants. We want to have our properties maintain value, just like everybody else wants. We want to be good neighbors and help people. But that's not how this all started. Um, it started very rough with this, this business owner taking down our trees and our bushes on our property and not listening to where the property line was. Um, I, I even shared our survey with her and hoped and suggested that they get a survey, that the owner of the building get the survey. There was debris left back in the back by um, previous tenants and, sh and the, she was cleaning it up and I asked her why was she cleaning up the, the property owner should have been cleaning that up. And sh they did clean it up. But yet, th they left debris from where they ripped up asphalt and bushes on the back of our property. Some of it's still there. Um, so we've, we've gone through some stuff that we haven't all got that cleaned up yet. But the thing is, it started out very rough. And that's not how we wanted it. I want to be a good neighbor. I support business. I, I don't have a problem with dogs having a place to go. I think that's really good. But the separation in this area, this piece of property is not fit for this business. Um, so I'm still uh, not asking you not to approve this because of the, the 300 feet. But personally, you know, I'm glad that you. Thank you. That was, uh, you know, I just don't want our neighborhood to be upset anymore. Thank you. And I received text threats from her. Okay, and, thank you. And I don't like that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Lisa Quillian, 925 Southeast 2nd Avenue. I was sworn in. Um, we, the neighbors, have explained again and again that these dogs can be heard from just outside of a metal building. It is, we've of course said that at Code Enforcement and everywhere we could possibly say it, um, it is clearly detrimental to the stability of the neighborhood. But here we are again. This is not a fight of neighbors against this business. This is residents of Delray standing up for their rights. We have the right to quiet enjoyment. So if one neighbor is not getting that, it matters. Any of you up there that had this behind your house, it would matter. So remember that, that it doesn't matter that I'm not a neighborhood that's next to Mr. Wolf or to Stevie, but it matters to one person is ruining their life. The right, the PNZ board seemed to feel uh, that the owner of the business didn't know she was out of compliance or that she was being a nuisance. So I'm just making it very clear tonight that, and, and this is simply because staff uh, did not accept my request to show these things. Uh, they also didn't take a personal video of which I took outside the business from Federal Highway. Um, so I kind of feel like I have to be a teacher here and point out that in 2019, she knew there was no daytime or nighttime boarding. In 2019, she knew that this was the wrong location for the business that she wanted to run. She knew. You guys had a wonderful heart and you said, you know what, we need more of these businesses. So you came together, you spent tons of tax dollars, Anthea worked so hard, everybody worked hard to change the ordinance. And now, these are all the places that she can have this business. You did that. You helped. You said, you know what, if you can find a concrete building where noises will not be heard, and you maybe have an alley between you or even a masonry wall between you, something that would make the neighbors not have to hear you all day and all night. That's the best I can do to just get the point across. But I want to say it in my way now, because emotions have torn this neighborhood apart. So I'm going to tell you how it feels from our point of view. There once was a small business that broke all the rules. 
And it was the only kind of town because no one else was breaking the rules. So the business grew and grew. The business was told that it was allowed, but it didn't care, or wasn't allowed, but it didn't care. The business was told it was affecting its neighbors, but it didn't care. The business grew so big that the kingdom decided that the rules should be changed and all the kingdom rejoiced. This was a good decision, one where it could follow the rules and please the neighbors. But the persistent business didn't care. So the great leaders of the kingdom sent the little business away to find a concrete palace where she could stay happily ever after. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Robin Ingle. I live at 3117 Karen Drive in Delray Beach, and I have been sworn. Mm -hmm. um, I submitted a video at uh, this last Wednesday at noon. I think that the videos that we, I don't know, they're going to show them. Um, no. Or all randomly. We were asked to video at different times, randomly, to, to show what was going on, and there was no dog barking when I was there. Um, I think my, my only point, this is the first meeting that I've attended, is that I, I actually feel for the neighbors that have, have had issues in the past, and I understand that. Um, but I think that it looks like Jen has done everything that she can to mitigate the issues as they've been described. It does sound like we got off to a rocky start. Again, I wasn't around for that. Um, but um, no one has, at this point in the meeting, um, delivered any evidence that there is an ongoing problem with the barking. She's uh, stopped the outdoor space, and so that seems to have mitigated the outdoor problems. Um, all of the um, other third-party people that have come in to observe and to record and to otherwise say, hey, you know, what's going on right now, don't seem to have been able to demonstrate or provide any evidence that there's current a current problem. So while um, there may have been a rocky start, there may be past issues that, um, that have been documented. I think that what we're here to do, what I hope we're here to do, is to go forward and see whether um, we can uh, properly provide an opportunity for this small business in Delray to thrive, to, to flourish, to provide an opportunity for those of us who, I have two dogs, um, for those of us who rely on uh, assistance and, and someplace safe and kind um, and caring uh, for us to be able to take our, our pets who are members of our family. Um, and it seems like that um, the work has been done and my hope is that you guys will um, see that and approve the measures to allow the business to go to continue and to go forward and uh, allow us to have a nice safe place, caring place for our babies. Um, so thank you very much for the time. Thank you. I'm sorry, sorry. Anthea? So I just want to say that um, if you are here and you sent a video, they are saved by your name but you have to tell him your name and that you sent a video okay. so that he can then play it for you, Mr. Yeah, I, I have videos, okay. but I didn't get them in. So, okay, <laughs> I'm uh, gonna have to. <laughs> I don't know how I can make them go up there from here. There's a whole quarantine <laughs> process. Okay. So, because I, I know there's one young lady who says she has one. So if you have one that you sent to us, tell us your name and oh, then we'll look for it. I didn't know I was supposed to send it. So, um, Anthea, it, just so I understand this, um, they will be speaking as the video is playing or, because you've got three minutes. Total, but ultimately, um, we are not playing them unless the person is here. I understand. To attest to it the does not add. So you don't have to play. It's it's okay. within three minutes. Thank you. And it has yes. to be their video. Yeah. Yes, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go right ahead. Okay. My name's Robert Feinberg, Marine Way, Delray Beach. Uh, I take my rescue you, were dog. You, were you uh, uh, beach dog two? twice a week, and uh, I've been going in the back and taking videos, which I can turn in. There's no noise. There's street noise that you can hear from the front that goes all the way into the back. And then you hear birds. And then I go at night and pick, them, pick her up like 4.30 and the same thing. I hear street noise and you hear birds. I don't hear dogs barking. So that's what I think a beach dog provides a service. And I don't know what to say. It should stay open. Or were you sworn in? Pardon me, Shelly? You sworn in. Oh, I'm done. I just think beach dogs should say open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sir, for the record, sir. For the record. I saw it. Okay. Did you, did you, did you sworn oh, in? 
Yeah. yeah. Were you sworn, you were sworn in previously? In? No, I wasn't. Okay, the clerk has there some that one. Yeah. You want to swear me in yeah. now? Yes, please. Thank you. Anybody else who would be speaking that hasn't been sworn in, please stand and be sworn in. <laughs> yeah, it's the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I do. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, do sir. Do I have to say it again? Nope. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I am Gail Lee McDermott, 721 Southeast 3rd Avenue in Osceola Park, which is in Delray Beach, and yes, I have been sworn in. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. I support the approval of Resolution 5822 for the conditional use of the request of Beach Dog Daycare. I have lived in Osceola Park for almost 27 years now. Osceola Park is a residential neighborhood encircled by commercial entities and always has been. There are some new taller structures on Federal Highway backing onto Osceola Park, but there are still a number of one-story existing structures housing a very diverse group of businesses. Beach Dog Daycare is one of these providing vitality the Federal Highway needs. Beach Dog Daycare became established in a warehouse on Federal Highway before COVID lockdown. It has acquired an excellent reputation. I have not used the services of Beach Dog Daycare for my dogs. They get to stay home and get terrorized by the cat. Uh, there may be a day that I will do so. <laughs> According to the various supporting documents for the res resolution, Beach Dog Daycare has been making every effort to comply with the conditional use requirements that were not in effect at the time the business began. Once again, I urge you to approve the request of Beach Dog Daycare, keeping an excellent business in our neighborhood of Osceola Park. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gail. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'll talk first. Hi, I'm Amanda. I live in 1350 Crystal Way, Delray Beach, and I was sworn in. Um, I didn't prepare anything. I was just coming to show Your you the video. Your last name is? Shamus. Thank you. Um, I can say I take my dog to it's Beach April Dog and at when I move a.m. Oh, okay. This is the video. <laughs> Here last year, I I had previously in Miami used a daycare that and boarding um, hotel that I basically had to fight after taking my dog there twice because she came back super anxious and hurt and they didn't take responsibility. So I have very high expectations for where I leave my dog and Beach Dog Daycare has been incredible and every time I drop off my dog and get her back, it's very quick in and out. Um, I call an email to hear more reports and at, when Anytime I'm one of those crazy dog parents that keeps checking the camera and every time I check all the dogs are safe and quiet and um, when I reach out to Jen, she, the owner of the business, she always sends me happy videos of my dog and so although my dog is my emotional support animal, she came with a lot of anxiety to, Del to Delray Beach and a trainer had told me, had recommended Beach Dog and ever since we took her there. It has made her so calm. She trusts people, and she trusts, goes in and out of the business with a wagging tail anytime I leave her. So I am fully trusting of the business, and I hope that they remain open. Thank you. Did you just tell us the date and time that that video was taken, for the record? Mm, it says it in the video, but I, it don't. was last week. Okay. It, it's like the first few seconds I say it. It's April 27th at 10.27 a.m. Thank you. And I showed up with no announcement. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
I'm Michelle Fasulo, and I was sworn in. I live at 821 Del Mar Way, apartment 201 at the Windsor. And this here is Linton, and we're here to uh, give a true testament to the kind of character that Jen is, not only as a person, but as a business owner. Linton was found, and how he got his name was because he was running around the parking lot of Starbucks about two weeks ago. No collar, no nothing, matted, hair down to the floor, and was just, you know, a lost dog. So we found him and immediately went to Beach Dog, where my big dog goes, and said, help Jen, what do I do? So Jen immediately went into action. We got a hold of Dawn, who's also in the audience, who groomed Linton for us, who's a little camera shy, um, got his, all his like prickly things out of him, got him groomed, got him taken care of. Jen got me in touch with her trainer, so he's doing really well getting into the pack of other dogs that he's living with. Um, so like I said, we're here as a testament to Jen's character, not only as a business owner and as a great business owner, but as a person and the kind of people that we want here in Delray. You know, so everything that everyone else has said about her business and all the forward actions she's done to remedy the situation that's going on, you know, is a testament to who she is as a person. So we're a little shy of our three minutes, but we don't want to take up too much time for Linton. He's a little shy. Um, but yeah, so without people like Jen, you know, these little dogs that we see running around wouldn't have the quality of life that they have. So thank you for all that you do do. We appreciate you. And that's it. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go get all of our water. Um, my name is Phoebe Warner. I live at 239 Northeast 21st Street, Delray Beach, and I was sworn in. Thank you. Um, so this video was taken on April 26th at about 12.30, um, middle of the day. It's in the southwest corner of the building in the Animal House parking lot. Um, there's no sounds. There's there. I actually had a dog with me. There was no barking. Um, and this is what it, it sounds like on a daily basis from outside. Um, the rest of the video will just be silence, me showing that it's beach dog from the back. That's the yard, that's the outdoor space. There's absolutely no sounds that you can hear coming from the building. Um, and just to speak on the business, I know Jen very well. I've worked at Beach Dog. Um, and as much as everyone here has shared how great of a place it is to take your dog and be a supporter of the business, I can speak to how important it has been to all the employees who work there. Um, it's primarily female staff and people are afforded not only professional support from Jen, but personal. Um, she is a very caring, nurturing boss. She wants to make sure that we are taking care of our own well-being and that she is there to support us beyond just a professional um, capacity. So as important it is, as it is for Beach Dog to stay open for everyone who brings their animals there, um, there's an entire staff that she supports in a professional and personal manner as well. So thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. The next person wants to come forward, Mayor. Just a reminder, according to our local rules, we can devote one hour to public comment. Right. And we're almost at the 30-minute mark. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Terry Berman. I'm at uh, 2944 Needham Court in Delray. And um, I, I sent a video in. I'm not sure if it made the, the cutoff time. Terry Berman. Okay. Well, my video basically is going to be the same as the other two that you have seen. Um, I dropped my dog off at 9.30 and you never hear any barking. I pick him up at 5 or 5.30, 5 6 o'clock, and the only barking I hear is him barking because he's happy to see me that I have picked him up. I just would like to speak to one second 
regarding property values. Um, I am a realtor, and I think everyone knows what, how the property values have changed in Delray in these last few years. Um, people are coming down here by probably 2,000 people a day are moving to the Florida area. Um, and property values have gone up most likely about, depending on the area, from anywhere from 30 to 45 percent. Um, and in this area also, if you go up and down third or fourth, you'll see all the construction and everything that is happening in the city. And the city is exploding. Um, so I beg to differ that it would hurt property values. I feel that property values are going high and will be maintaining that level of, um, of acceleration probably for another, you know, at least another year. Um, I, in that particular area that we're talking about, there have been sales at 895, 450, 475. So these are all single family homes. And of course, it depends on the condition that the house is in, um, et cetera. But most property values in this area, anyone has put a house on the market now is selling it in a day and with multiple offers. Um, I, I feel that Jen is a huge contributor to all of us that have f fur babies. Um, it's, a f it's a female business, and please reconsider and have her stay open for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Laura Bernstein, 704 Southeast 2nd Street here in Delray. Sworn in? Yes. Thank you. Um, so this video is from last week on Tuesday night before 9 o'clock. And I tried to show the law firm it's from behind Beach Dog. And this is the back wall of Beach Dog. And it's quiet. It's very quiet. There's the back fence where the backyard is. And really, you can't even hear hardly even traffic. That's street. That's um, 6th or 5th, fifth, fifth, going southbound. And those are the homes just west of Beach Dog. And will you play the second? So this is the second night. This is after 9 o'clock. And just same area. Jordan Carlick, I reside at 34 Northwest. Hello, 7th my Street. name is Jordan Carlick. I own a business in downtown Delray. I'm standing here at Beach Dog. Today is Thursday, April 28th. I'm picking up my dog right now at 4.38 p.m. I hear zero barking. I am in the back corner of Beach Dog, right next to Animal House. And as you can hear, I will stop talking. There's no barking dogs at all. I haven't sworn it. Thank you. That was 10 seconds and not one barking dog. Thank you. So I'm here to share support for Jen. I recently got a dog about four or five years ago. Um, and I took him to another daycare in Boca and he got sick and he got kennel cough and it was about six weeks until he got better. Didn't know who Jen was, Jen was referred to me, I started going to Jen. My dog has had nothing 
but no issues. She takes care of him like she's like he's her own dog. He once had a swollen face, so on every application you have to put down your veterinarian. So she drove all the way to Boynton. I was out of town. She drove my dog all the way to Boynton. My vet couldn't see him. He's swollen up his face and everything like that. She drove him all the way back down to Boca to her vet. Care like that. Like my, my dog could have died at any other place. You know what I mean? Any other daycare, I went to the one in Boca. As I said, my dog came back with kennel cough just like that. Not even overnight, just three hours, my dog got sick. You know, my dog has not had any issues. And then the fact that Jen would take time out of her day to rush a dog to a, a veterinarian. Not just one, but two. You know, type, shows you the type of person that she is. You know, I'm a little nervous. My voice is a little shaking. I apologize about that. But the fact that we're, we're here, I understand that there were issues. It's not about what used to be. It's about what we're doing to move forward, right? We all have issues. We all have past, right? But how do we rectify that? How, how do we move forward, right? I'm here asking you, just please look at the situation. Look at how many people are coming out for support. Look at uh, the time that you guys are putting into this, that Jen's putting into this, that everyone in the community is coming out on her behalf. I understand that there are issues with the residents. You know, I used to own a building in Delray as well. I still have my business in Delray. I love Delray. If I could live in Delray, I would, but I live in Boca. So uh, that's not where I, I, I reside right now. But please reconsider or please vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, my name is Laurie Nesbitt and I live at 8112 excuse me, 812 Southeast 3rd Avenue, Delray Beach. That is in Osceola Park. And uh, I've lived there for over 30 years, and I've never been afraid to walk around my neighborhood. It's a really nice neighborhood. Um, I'd just like to make a couple points. And I hate to say this, but I don't have a dog in this race. Mm. I, uh, I've lived there for a long time, and I love my neighbors. And I do think that um, dog daycare facilities are really important because everyone has dogs now. I have a dog. I don't use doggy daycare. Um, my husband walks the dog in the morning. I walk her other times, and so we have a, somebody else to take care of her. But it, it's a really important service, and I, I agree with that. But I think some points need to be made. One is um, the people, the, the residents there, the Wolfs and Steve and the other lady, I'm sorry, I don't know her name, they don't have customers to come and talk for them. So dog daycare obviously has some happy customers, so there's lots of people coming and talking for them. And um, these other three people that back right up against it don't necessarily have that. So that makes a big point. I think another point is it's very nice that everybody's got all these great videos. I can't help but notice all these videos have been taken within the past couple weeks. And clearly at this point it's very important for the owner of this facility to behave and to make sure she's complying. And the big problems that started with this issue were because the business wasn't behaving and it wasn't complying. And so what concerns me is that if you approve this now, it's a lot easier to get something done than to get it undone. If, um, it, so I, if, I think compromises can be made and I think it's fantastic that they withdrew the request to be outdoors because I thought that was a serious, serious problem. Um, I have heard the dogs when I'm walking my dog. Uh, not, not, not tons, I'm not saying all the time, but I've, I've heard the dogs when I'm walking down 4th Avenue and when I'm on Federal Highway. Um, so I think it's great that they, they have made some changes. I think it's great that they've withdrawn the application to be outdoors. I would be a little bit concerned about things proceeding. Anthea mentioned that none of the stuff in the back has been taken down. Again, it's, easy, it's frequently easier to do something than to undo it, and, and that worries me. So maybe there could be some kind of a compromise. I think overnight use is very concerning, but yeah, maybe it could be done, as Anthea mentioned, stick with the daytime thing, let it go for six months, see if everybody behaves. There's been a fair amount of bad behavior going on here and a certain amount of harassment. Um, Yeah, that's mainly what I wanted to say. Uh, I do think that one point was raised that's important to keep in mind is if you would want to have this business on, on your back fence. I've got three obnoxious little, what do you call those things? Chihuahuas on the other side of my back fence and they're very annoying. So when I think about having lots and lots of dogs, that, that's more of a concern. But the, as, as Delray grows and it is growing and we're having more and more businesses interacting with residences, good behavior is important and that's, that's where you guys come in. Thank, Thank you. you very much. I'm sorry, were you sworn? Yes, I was. I was sworn. Sir. Hi, my name is Chris Harvey. I'm at 2040 Alta Meadows Lane in Delray Beach, Florida. I was sworn in. Okay. 
Thank you. Um, I just want to echo what everyone else says. I take my dog to Beach Dog, and uh, Beach Dog is a very important part of my life. Um, as a, a business owner here in Delray, I work a lot of hours. I'm away from the house. I have total peace of mind that Jen and her team is going to take good care of um, my dog. But what I want to speak to is just, um, I'm, as a business owner, I'm also a big admirer of, of Jen's business acumen. You know, I see, you know, I remember, I've been here long enough to remember what was there before. And I don't know how that blight that was there before affected the property values, but um, I saw that she filled a need. She created a business there, she created jobs, and I see it being successful. I think she should be applauded for that. Um, I do know that, yes, there were issues in how this all started, but I just saw her make a very heartfelt apology, and, and you know, I can, I'm pretty good at, at uh, gauging sincerity, and I, and I think she's willing to work with everyone here. Um, so I stand here and approve, uh, asking that you guys approve this, um, and uh, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Lisa Quillian's video I talked to. I'm James Quillian, 925 Southeast 2nd Avenue. Hopefully they'll have a video from my wife that she took. No? Okay. Well, my wife gets up, uh, you know, 5 o'clock in the morning and goes to the beach a couple days a week during the turtle season. She's a turtle ranger. And so she's parked out in front of beach dogs multiple times a couple months ago and then in the past and has videos of cars coming by and then dogs barking. Cars coming by and then dogs barking. The reason being is that it's a metal building. It's a metal building. Now, if you think back to all the music you've listened to in your life, all the different sets of speakers you have, how many of them were made out of metal? They don't make speakers out of metal for a reason. Because it distorts sound and it amplifies the wrong sound. And so you have a metal building that's, that's it's almost impossible to completely insulate a metal building to where it's not going to distort sound. So then you have an applicant that for two years has been breaking the code and the rules of Delray. Multiple police uh, uh, calls, I mean, beyond to where the police department said, we're not going to answer anymore. This is a civil matter. We're not going to respond to any more calls of complaints. So in the previous thing, there's always been calls of complaints up until, like I said, recently. And this has been going on for two years. There's police videos from body cams of dogs barking at 3 o'clock in the morning. So there's actual videos that your own police department has taken or the video cam took of being called. This has been going on. Me, myself, I've been to 11 meetings about this alone. 11 meetings. That's mind-boggling. When you have residents that, that are upset about this, how many of them can go to 11 meetings there's people that are, don't want this, that are, are out of town, or they're just fed up. They've gone into four or five meetings already. When does it end? This is a metal building. That, it has nothing to do with the, the owner, even though she seems to be running like a Facebook campaign against people that don't want the dogs barking in a metal building. That's all it is. It's just a metal building. If it was a concrete building, we wouldn't be talking about this right now. But it's not a concrete building. It's a metal building. And there has been dark barking. And there's so many videos of dogs barking all times of the day and night and it's not because they're in that little wooded backyard the fence backyard they're in a metal building uh you know with nobody there with cars on federal highway making noise you know motorcycles going by and it reverberates into the metal building the dogs react and they bark and so when people take videos of the past two weeks when uh, obviously the applicants are straight and narrow now following the rules I mean, yeah, I bet you they'd have some quiet videos. And they're actually showing you videos because she's not supposed to have dogs inside at night. She's not supposed to have dogs in a fenced area. I wonder why there's no noise, because they're not supposed to be there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, my name is Louise Lafond. I live at 1029 Langer Way, and I was uh, sworn in. Uh, I have a video, but it's, it, we don't, it's very similar it to the old about videos. Ten oh. Yeah, well, Clock in the morning. Um, it was on the Friday, Friday the 29th and, uh, of April. As you can see, other than a car that is hiding 
from the parking lot uh, there's no sound that we can hear from the outside of the uh, beach dog daycare okay so I just want to uh, say and and I see you know there's been a very long history since the beginning of this uh, business. Um, but what I found, and I'm a customer, you know, I don't work there, but I'm a customer of uh, Beach Dog Daycare. But what I can see is that definitively the owner and the business, they really want to continue to do business in this city and also prof provide to us, you know, an important, you know, service. There's more and more, uh, Pets have been part of, and more and more part of our lives. People are working. We want, you know, it's a good thing to have a place where we can send safely the dogs instead of having them just stay home and bark or roam around. Uh, so I think that that service is important, but also what's very important that you can see, it's all the modification and all the cost and all the effort that this business wants to do to stay in business here in this town and continue to give us some service, an excellent service, but a lot of people say. But I see, okay, there's been you know a lot of history, a lot of problems, but I can see that really there's a positive you know reaction right now and a motivation to do it right and accommodate all the neighbors in the city. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Carolina Calderon. I live 24-7 at 831 Southeast 4th Avenue, Delray Beach. This morning I forwarded an email to all the commissioners with a multiple of emails, I mean videos and other uh, documents related to Beach Dog. And like we had said before, we are not against dogs or the dog daycare. We are against the dogs behind our house barking. Many videos here for people dropping dogs, picking up dogs, or just stopping to take the video. I live behind that, that establishment 24-7. And since COVID, I've been working from home more than ever. Before, I didn't used to be home at all during the day. Um, we had, we've been going through this since December of 2019. It's about time we need to end this. Um, it's not only the dogs, yeah, now she's been, I can tell you the dogs have been very quiet. I can tell you with the minute, the last time I heard the dogs barking, because I always have paper with me and I happened to hear the dogs and I wrote it down. But they've been very quiet, but I believe if you're on the micro microscope, you will be make sure that you behave. So that's what's happening right now. That's why all these videos with no dog barkings. Also, um, not only we have dog barkings, but also we have texts from the owner, Jennifer Roselli, to my husband. Nasty text, not only to my husband, to our neighbors. Also threatening our neighbors with lawsuits and everything because they came to the March 21st meeting and they talked on our behalf. Uh, this is getting really out of hand. This person sometimes walking by the sidewalk, she flips her at my husband because she I, doesn't like him at all. She has put in the social media horrible stuff about him. He's not perfect. I'm not going to say he's perfect. None of us are. But, you know, this, is, this woman has gotten out of hand, trashing our, our people and everything. This is need to stop. And also, um, one question. During the... Planning and Sony meeting, they approved seven to seven. We still have nighttime doggies. I thought this was not going to go through the nighttime. It was only the daytime. I don't understand why we have still dogs at nighttime in the establishment. She's now covering all the windows with paper so people cannot see. My husband goes at night and tries to take videos, and she calls the police on him like it was a stranger on the sidewalk to, uh, taking videos. So. This is getting really out of hand. It needs to stop. Thank you. Were you Anyone else? Emma, were you sworn? Yes, I was. 
Sarah, I don't want to forget the gentleman is on the. Yes, no, I know, and I want to make sure that we make time for him, so don't let um, us get down to that point and then not have that ability to be able to invite him into com comment. Understood. Thank you very much. <laughs> we haven't forgot you. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, my name is Gary Wolf. I have been sworn in. I'm at 831 Southeast 4th Avenue. Like my wife just said, we're right next to Steve Ferguson. We're, um, we're right up. Uh, our property lines overlap. So I'd like to dedicate all these videos to the uh, people that don't hear the dogs barking. And this, this started, this video here, out by the front sidewalk. I have a boatload. Of videos okay I have tons and tons and tons of videos for the last year and a half from the perspective that all these people just showed no dogs barking it sounds at least like this okay so I think what I've decided is that I'm gonna sue the city for what's already transpired okay and then we'll go from there because you're smirking over there I like that I like keep smirking Okay. Please just keep your and comments. Um, let, me, uh, let me read some of the things, okay, that, that she's texted me. Now, this is 1 o'clock in the morning. This is uh, 12.55. Someone threw a dog over our fence. They obviously abandoned. I find it extremely sad that you choose to record a distressed dog for hours instead of calling to help it. We did call it in, okay? We did call it. My neighbor Steve did. Okay, don't worry, I have a terrified dog in my house now and we'll bring it to a rescue and get scanned for a tip. Very sad you, you don't help the distressed animals in need and choose to continue to be a jerk. So, Miss Roselli needs to uh, send me that at 1 o'clock in the morning. Okay, uh, here's another one. You seem really to be interested in our parking lot nightly. To save you time, you should know that half of my staff is in recovery. What the hell do I need to know that about? What's, what's that got to do with the price of tea in China? Okay. Uh, we partnered up with a women's recovery uh, for a year, okay? That doesn't mean anything. Uh, they don't have a car. They ride their bike or scooter to work, okay? That's so she can cover because there's no parking. There's no one in the parking lot at night when she just throws the dogs in the building every night for over a year, okay? Their bike is in our lobby and also uh, their bike is in our lobby and also in our fenced area by our garbage can. Feel free to look around the front window during your strolls early morning. She's, she's inviting me on the property right there okay in a text then it says I save every one of the things well let's see the video of somebody throwing the dog over the fence but she doesn't she won't come up with that one you should focus more on, on getting more sleep well she's texting me at one o'clock in the morning I should I should get more sleep and the video this video is at 5 30 in the morning but I should get more sleep you're in your 50s but you look like you're in your 70s cheers and she's got some beer mugs and uh, so I look like I'm in, I said, that was right after I had double hernia surgery. So she's like kicking the guy in a wheelchair. Okay. And uh, please continue to send my message to the city. Uh, we all find it comical. Do you find it comical? Mr. Okay, Wolf, there you go. I ask you what? I'm with the Delray police. I've never given you permission to uh, come on my property. Excuse me, Mr. Wolf, could she you? She just said I could come on her property, but she's right. telling the police that. There's at least three bogus police reports. Thank you, sir. May I just Thank ask you. you when that video was taken? One was July 4th uh, last year, 2021, at 7.30 in the morning, and the other one was uh, Christmas, uh, December 26th at 5.30 in the morning. And, and she said it was the same video as hers. That's not the same video. That's 2021, sir? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Oh, and this one, I'm going to shoot her business partner. She puts that on the computer. Just Thank you. Footnote. Mayor, we're at 52 minutes. Okay. So. All right, let's... Uh, we got these two, and then we got the gentleman, and that's it. Okay. Oh. Well, there's, there's okay. Well, we're gonna we're going to stop at at fifty five fifty um, six minutes. We got to give him the time. So I'm sorry, but we're gonna cut it off. So you're gonna be able to speak, and the next lady's gonna be able to speak, and that's it. And we're gonna go to the gentleman on the so determine who's gonna speak after this, and then we're only have one more speaker after you, and then we're going to this gentleman, and then I'm sorry, but public comment is closed. Go right ahead. Okay, Margaret Keller, 729 Southeast 3rd Avenue. I was sworn in. And unlike James, uh, the chess guy, I'm not shy, but I hate public speaking. But I thought that it was important to get up here and just say that I am in support of Beach Dog and what Jennifer is trying to do for the neighborhood, and not just the neighborhood, but for the community in general. It saddens me because these are my friends and my neighbors, and it's really 
it's put a rift between the community and it's just sad. But I really, my observations have been sitting outside of Granger's, I haven't heard any barking. One time last year, Jen gave me just a tour. It was about 10 o'clock at night. The place was pristine and I didn't hear a peep out of any dogs, not a peep. And I know that she put a lot of money into this and she's doing everything that she can to mitigate any noise that may be coming out and disturbing any of the neighbors who are adjacent to her. I live far enough away that even if dogs were barking, I would not be able to hear, but Granger's is right next door, and I, I personally have not witnessed a peep out of any of the animals there, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Just come Thank in you. support of Jen. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Elizabeth McHugh, 732 Southeast 3rd Avenue. I have been sworn in. Thank you. So um, the, the people who have been complaining continue to say that there's barking 24-7. 24-7 is every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every week, every month. That would be two, about two and a half years. That comes out to about 38,880 hours of nonstop barking. Where are the videos? Donnie Thorpe complained. Two and a half years, we've never heard from him, we've never seen a video. Gary Wolf's videos, 2021. James Quillian keeps talking about the metal building, that they don't sell metal speakers. Go on Amazon, there's over 2,000 metal speakers. So the metal building thing, you know, let's kill that one. Um, if, if the owner of Beach Dog was a uh, member of one of their families or a relative or a friend, we wouldn't be here tonight. It's ridiculous. Where are all the videos? Oh, 805 testified at Planning and Zoning. They don't even live at 805. It's an Airbnb. They live in Boynton Beach. It's a turnover rental. I've talked to the renters, several different renters. They don't hear anything. One guy didn't even know Beach Dog was back there. So these people that keep telling you that the dogs are barking 24-7, where are your videos for the last two and a half years? If you're listening to almost 39,000 hours of nonstop barking, where are your videos? Thank you. It's ridiculous. And oh, excuse me. I have um, close to 40 hours of police reports of surveillance, three hours, the mornings, the afternoons, and the evenings. No barking. All reported badge numbers, names, dates, different times. And I want to suggest to you if you think this is all rigged to keep. Um, things quiet for a certain period of time. Jen Roselli, each one of you, pick a date, pick a time, she will pull up on her pers on her surveillance in the building and there's no barking. So you can't rig that, if you understand what I'm saying. Pick a date, pick a time, tell her to pull it up and see if there's barking. There isn't any. And I don't know where two and a half years of nonstop barking that nobody doesn't have hours and hours and hours of video. Gary Wolf doesn't have any video from his yard. And the one video he showed you, I'm gonna submit as bogus. You can download it from Yahoo. It's the exact same video. Thank you. Thank you. I wanna go ahead and have the gentleman speak? Yes, I believe his name is Mr. Brown. Are you on the, on the Mr. phone? Brown, we are not having any more speaking on this. Sorry. Yes, his name is Mr. Brown when you're ready. Go right ahead. Have you been sworn? He, t he did. He was sworn. I've been sworn, and my name is Jeff Brown, and my address is business address 750 South Dixie Highway, Boca Raton, Florida, and I represent Carolina Calderon and Gary Wolf, who you all both heard from. I would like to begin by suggesting that numbers matter. 100% of the neighbors are opposed to this petition. Another number that matters is the code, which requires a 300-foot buffer a 300 foot separation and that number matters because in order to even get your attention they need to seek a waiver and the waiver should be denied the waiver is covered in 2.4.7 b and it goes into paren 5 which talks about waivers there is two matters that you should make findings that they are negative findings 5a is that it will not adversely affect the neighboring area answer is it will adversely affect, so you need to make a finding, a negative finding, that it will adversely affect. And 5D, 
of that waiver findings is uh, that you will not be granting a special privilege to this particular applicant. And you should find, in fact, that it would be re uh, granting a special privilege to this particular applicant. She is allowed to go somewhere else if she wants to, but this would create a special privilege. So on that basis, you should begin by finding that the waiver is denied, and that will, uh, night follows day, that the application will be denied. And uh, then let me talk about the conduct of the applicant. She does not have clean hands. She has been exercising bad behavior for two years. Uh, she is not in compliance. She is not behaving. She has an active, open code violation, which includes a finding a violation and a two, I think it's a $250 a day fine that is active and ongoing. The reason for those violations and those fines is overnight boarding. She knows this is not a question of an innocent mistake or uh, an, a, an ignorant mistake. She knows what she's doing. She knows she's in violation, and she figures it's better to seek forgiveness through a conditional use uh, than, than to go and seek permission at the right time. She has thumbed her nose up at the city. She has done a GoFundMe page to fund her quote, and these are her words, a two-year battle with the city. The commissioner should very much take offense at this. You have employees, code enforcement people, Delray Beach police members who are involved in this out of control struggle. And she herself has admitted a two year battle with the city. She wants to go forward while in non compliance. She is not seeking permission for something that she has done forward. She is seeking permission for the violations she's done in the past. Thank you, sir. And I'm, I'm sorry. Your time um, is up. Sure. Your, your time is I up. Have two, may I have two more minutes? No, no, sir. We don't permit anybody to have any more than just a three minutes. I'm sorry. I think we got the gist of it. Yeah. Yes. Can I just clarify two points um, sure. just very quickly? Um, I was going to say thank you. Oh, we'll take that. <laughs> um, there is no waiver before you, so the 300-foot limitation that the attorney spoke about is not relevant to your consider consideration. That would only apply if she were seeking an outdoor use which as Ms. Giannotis explained early on, yep. that has been withdrawn. The second issue, there are pending code violations. The goal of code enforcement is compliance. And so that is why she's here before you because part of what you know she's going to have to explain to the code board is how she came into compliance and whether or not she secured an approval from one of the city's boards. So she still has to deal with the code violations. That's not gonna end here. But you know, if she is able to come into compliance, that would obviously look favorably before that board. Okay, thank you. Very good. Madam Mayor, uh, my name is Randy Goldberg. I'm the attorney for uh, Beach Dog. I was waiting to the end of people to testify to kind of wrap up uh, our position. Would it right. be possible to present to the uh, commission? Were you listed on her application as her as her agent for this matter? I have to defer I believe to it's Mr. Mr. Uh, Costello. No, I wasn't. Yeah. I mean, we, we, then we're going to open it up to everybody because it's not fair for, for others. I mean, we basically said that we were going to have just, we have one hour. I understand, done that. Madam Mayor. But I think, I think we have the gist of it. I mean, I don't know that you're going to bring anything more to the table. Um, we might be able to ask questions um, afterwards that might be, be pertinent. And at that point in time during discussion, um, just make yourself available. Absolutely, Madam Mayor. And again, my, my position was going to be to wrap up uh, everything that's been testified in support of Beach Dog. Yeah. But as your, Madam Mayor says, you've got the gist of it, and I yep. think the gist will carry the day. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, public comment at this point is closed. We're going to go back to the applicant and the um, city. And um, if there is any rebuttal testimony, this would be the time to rebut the testimony. Yes, sir. So yes. Or cross-examination as well. Ma I'm sorry. Cross-examination first. Mr. Costello. Do you have any cross-examination of anybody who testified? I have no cross, but I do have rebuttal. Okay. Well, let's go to the city. Any okay. cross? Okay. I have no cross, but also rebuttal. Okay. So, um, Mr. And, Costello, and, you got you got time for your rebuttal. One, one quick question. Uh, as part of that, Ms. Jellin, can I play my video? 
We did get it out of quarantine. Sure. I've been in quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Play it. it Let's do to it. Me all the time. Yes. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, and so I had a list of days. These are basically reduced to ten seconds. I was there much longer. But uh, this was April eleventh, April fifteenth, around six o'clock. There's a couple. You hear that? Thank you. That's that's the little guy. This is from the northwest property line. This is a, just another day at about I think this was April 26 at 314. And then these are some of the evening ones. Um, this is 8.40 p.m. to the rear. You can hear the plates at Granger's. They're closing. And this is southwest corner of the property. This was, I know, get a life. This was 11.30 on April 30th. So, um, a Saturday night. <laughs> so, anyway, I apologize. Um, Saying a little bit more about you, Jeff. Than I know, that's it's really. <laughs> so, I'm just going to, in these videos, you will not hear anything. Um, just quickly, this we understand the, what has transpired. The applicant has been contrite and sincere in moving forward. This is, these, we are correcting these actions by making this site compliance. The code revisions speak specifically to, to this. While there is a broad area where, where one would say these are, uses are permitted that don't need to be here, it's really actually limited. You figure your 300 foot buffer, you need a waiver in a lot of situations, and not every industrial building is available to conduct a business that serves a community. Uh, we, there's another one, North Federal Highway, that's another meeting for you, but these serve the community. Um, these, these are the improvements, as I said. Yeah, we hear about a metal, but these are improvements that are gonna deter the sound. You're talking about a significant investment to these build, this building to comply with code, which in order to correct the action, these improvements need to be installed, bought and paid for, and it includes a sprinkler system that has to be installed, which was a, a code requirement. Um, you know, this, these improvements will ensure quiet enjoyment, and these use can coexist in a com adjacent commercial corridor, adjacent to the residential, in, in a cohesive manner. Um, you know, I, so just, just wanted to just follow up on some of the comments that were made and we really, uh, would appreciate your support on this. Thank you. Thank you. Or approval, I should say, not support. There you go. So, Anthea Janiotis for the record. Um, I didn't tell you the planning zoning board vote, which yes, I, I always do. I <laughs> so I have the slide. I just stopped. So on March 21st, 2022, the planning and zoning board voted six to one to recommend approval of the conditional use request with the limitation of hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and no outdoor use or overnight boarding. I think it's also important to note that the hours, I think um, they were consistent with the applicant's request. The code allows it to go to 8 p.m. So the distinction of an hour does matter. Um, and then just to, to really drive the point home, the 300 foot separation is, is if you're using that outdoor use mm -hmm. area. And I think what we can all see is that the outdoor activity is quite disruptive mm -hmm. without a separation. Right. And so ultimately, um, whether removing that is enough to ensure compatibility, I think is the issue at hand. Um, and then finally, how would we know there's too much noise? Uh, so we know we are undergoing a noise ordinance and while we do not have a decibel rule, you're not supposed to be able to hear um, things that are more than 100 feet away. However, this LDR narrowed that 
um, and said that if frequent, habitual, or long continued animal sounds are plainly audible from the adjacent properties, the building is not considered sufficiently insulated. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have to work from at this point. Great. So that's all I have. All right, thank you very much. Um, so that is it, we are going to the board. Okay, um, Lord, is that to me? Okay, so um, first I wanna say to Ms. Roselli, I'm sorry for whatever tragedy you have going on. Um, I know that's challenging. The, for the people here, just so you understand, the, when the rules in the city are made, they are so that we can have a good neighbor policy and so that we can all enjoy a great quality of life. And, and that's the goal here. One of the things that um, concerns me a little, to be very honest with you, is you have been breaking the rules. And you appeared here last time and you apologize. But then on Facebook, there were comments about the commission being corrupt. We sit here and we do our best to serve the residents. So I just want to say I thank you for the apology. And you know I'm assuming it's very sincere. But I think we have to go forward. And also, I want to say I can tell that you're very good to the animals. I have an animal, and I can tell you're good. And I appreciate that service because I know the residents need that. So I do appreciate what you bring to our city, and I want you to know that. I really don't appreciate how this all evolved. Having said that, however, I do think if our commission is not going to vote this in, then we need to give her ample time to continue her business at, you know, so that she can find a new location if we deem it to be seven to seven, if we are going to vote it in. And I'm leaning in that direction. I do think we have to do it on that trial basis to make sure that, one, you do follow the plan laid out by Mr. Costello, because I, I do believe that will resolve your issues. And two, so that we can en engage in some good neighbor policy and try and rectify this rift, because it's not a good situation for you or for them. I think if you're in a situation where you're, you don't have the dogs outside, and I appreciate you making that accommodation, that, and there isn't noise to be heard, nobody in your neighborhood, surrounding neighborhood will really be concerned. Um, so again, I appreciate the service you bring. Um, I don't have a problem with the parking at all. I imagine people are not stationary there. Um, and I, I look forward to hearing what my fellow commissioners have to say. Thank you. Vice Mayor? No, we're, we're, we're discussing, sorry. Yes, sir. Well, it's been a fascinating couple hours. Um, I am not a dog owner, but I recognize the passion dog owners are, have. Uh, but I do live on Federal Highway. And I moved to Federal Highway uh, a couple blocks off Atlantic Avenue. And here's what I hear all the time. I hear traffic. I hear police cars. I hear ambulances. There's a concert at Old School Square. I hear that. But I chose to live where I live knowing that, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. once in a while I'm going to hear some noise. Now, the videos are great, but no one's going to bring in a video that they don't want you to see. Uh, but I look at it this as... You have to balance a need in our city. And you know, there's many people that spoke today and use the service. And I gotta be honest, I've driven by the warehouse. I've never seen inside. I'm amazed how nice it is inside. I see a shack outside. I, I, I'm amazed uh, what has gone on there. So I look at it and we sit up here somewhat in a, a judicial capacity and we have to go by the evidence that was presented in the last couple hours. And I appreciate the videos, I appreciate the testimony. Obviously, you're gonna hear uh, uh, some of the neighbors that are not happy. And you're gonna hear the people that use the business, they love you, no question about it. There's one thing that stuck out, and Anthea, I don't know where you went, but you tell me if I'm wrong. It was presented in testimony that since November, of last year, there's been no noise complaints. Is that correct? Is that accurate? It is correct. I do want to just, I don't know, volunteer that um, there was some comment at Planning and Zoning Board that um, PD was not inviting additional noise complaints. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if that's true or not, though. And I don't know if PD can speak to it, so. But objectively, I have to look at that, yeah. at least from where I sit. 
that since November, there's been no noise complaints. And I think it's very important for the neighbors to not have these complaints. I, I, I find it hard to believe that the dogs never bark. I'm sure they do. But it has to be on a continued basis uh, that I think would uh, uh, bother a neighbor that would have a reasonable uh, uh, object, uh, expectation of quiet, that they'd be able to enjoy their property. And I, I look at the backup here, and I see the Planning and Zoning Board, which I think is very tough. They voted six to one to recommend approval of the conditional use request with a limitation of hours from seven to seven and no outdoor use or overnight boarding. Mm -hmm. So that would be my position. I think that's fair and reasonable. Uh, obviously, we're gonna have a noise uh, ordinance that will be coming through sooner than later, hopefully. If there's problems, neighbors complain. And I, I would also note for the record that uh, one of the gentlemen said that 100% of the neighborhood was against this. Gail Lee McDermott said she's has no problems with it. And I know when Gail Lee McDermott shows up at City Hall, uh, I find her very credible. So I'm going to go with what Planning and Zoning recommend. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Boston? Sure. So I, I'll, I won't bury the lead. Um, as far as the decision tonight, I think as long as the noise measurement policies and procedures are followed and all listed, Building improvements are made. This is not detrimental to the area, the surrounding area, and I'll be in favor of uh, P&Z's recommendation. Um, additionally, though, I would just like to add from the beginning, I appreciate the applicant's uh, apology. I'm sure over these last few years with your business and the jobs of your employees um, in jeopardy that um, your, your reaction or the way you reacted was tested, and I'm sure you've learned a lot. Um, I'm sure your patience was tested because you had to work with government. Ours is tested all the time. Um, but I want everyone to know why we look at requests like this. We, yes, we have rules in our city, but there's exceptions that we make. And matter of fact, there's members that aren't for this exception that have come, come to us from Osceola Park many times for exceptions. Mm -hmm. They have been in favor of building exceptions, alleyway abandonments, in rezoning of blighted areas to welcome dense downtown development. They've been in favor of those exceptions, um, of those changes of our rules. So this is why we have this system. We have this system so we can look at a local business and say, how can we help? How can we get there in ensuring that the surrounding area is, uh, is not affected negatively? Now, I like living in a dog-friendly city. I don't have a dog, I chose to have three kids instead, so maybe, maybe, maybe one day, but when you look at the best cities to live in and vacation, and they all have a lot in common, they're usually green cities, they're usually cities that welcome art and culture, they're walkable, they're bikeable, and guess what? They're dog friendly. In order to provide that dog friendly city, you have to have outdoor areas, parks, and, and dog parks, et cetera, we know that. But I just wanted to read this quote. The next thing you have to have if you want to be a dog-friendly city is having programs and policies that make businesses providing pet dog services welcome and convenient. You have to have those services. You can't drive your dog-friendly do dog owners out of your city to go and get those services. You have to provide them inside and not far away from, the, from, from residential property, not buried in a commercial zone. So I just wanted to put that all on, all, all on the record and because this has been a long process happening and this is why we go through this process and thank you for being, you know, being patient and hopefully um, this will be a positive new, new way to move forward um, together, both as your business and uh, as the city. Very good, thank you. Commissioner Johnson? Yes, thank you very much, Mayor. This says, uh, Vice Mayor Frankel said, it's been a very interesting two hours this is uh, how government works and doesn't work. Uh, first of all, I'd like to add uh, my sentiments to those of the Deputy Vice Mayor uh, Cassell concerning, and I'll call her Jennifer, Miss Jennifer's um, family situation. This has got to be very difficult. Whatever it is, I'm sure the last thing you want to do is be here fighting for your business. So my heart goes out to you. Um, I'd like to, as a full disclosure, say I don't have a dog in this fight or any other fight. I haven't had a, a dog as an adult in my entire um, years, adulthood. So 
although I don't have a dog, I've never had a dog as an adult, I understand the love and family attachments that people who own animals have. Um, sometimes if you don't like their dog, they don't want to be your friend. And the way some of them treat their dogs and by not training them, I don't want to be their friends any either. But um, what I'd like to say is I fault the city for this. For two years, we've allowed this situation to continue and to fester, wherein a business owner who may or may not have understood that she was in the wrong place with the wrong type of structure to house the business that she's trying to grow and provide a service to the community. I don't know what the disconnect was. I don't know how it has gotten to the point where neighbors feel that they're threatening lawsuits if certain commissioners don't um, vote or say what they want the certain commissioners to say and do. And that seems to be the way the situation goes lately that if um, people don't like what the commissioner commission decides that we just go vi viral and start doing all kinds of things, suing, threatening, calling, emailing, Facebooking, whatever. Um, I think we've become the most uncivilized, more uncivilized because of this. And I'm not just saying this is Delray Beach. I think it seems to be worldwide. But getting back to this present situation, for two years we've allowed this to happen. I did make a visit to the property and I'm very happy that I did because back to the fault of the city for allowing this to have happened for two years and not having done anything except to start giving code violations. We didn't even have a code or a ordinance in place to avoid this type of a situation. We allowed her, gave her a license to operate in the building and then we didn't foresee <clears throat> excuse me, the possibility of what could happen if you have caged animals, or not even caged, but animals in a metal building, and these animals do a lot of barking for whatever the reason. So the neighbors probably did whatever they could do or didn't do. Um, threatening, I don't know, a lot of back and forth and civilized whatever. Um, I visited it and noticed if I could have someone pull up the first slide that Mr. Costello showed, that gives the location of this property. I think it's going to speak volumes about what little care the city has had in certain situations. And I'm sorry for being so long, Mayor, but this to me is, is quite typical of the th kinds of things that we need to pay better, more attention to, rather. If you look at where Beach Dog is located, first of all. Did you want that slide? Yes, that was a slide. I'm sorry. OK. If you go up to the Southeast 8th Street location and locate Granger's Restaurant, first of all, there is no alley. You see the Granger's parking. Then you see partially what I presume is what we call an alley. And it appears that Beach Dog's property, and I'm not saying it's her property, it's the owner of the properties, they're obviously in the alley right up against the uh, neighbor's property line. How we've allowed this to happen, I don't know. And then again, when you continue towards Southeast 9th Street, there is neither an alley but some little narrow, solid green line. I don't know who owns that property. So if they ever sell their property, we're going to have a problem here. Who owns what? Does the city own something? Have we abandoned it? Have we given it up? Have we sold it? As we seem to have done in lots of neighborhoods in the Northwest community. These are the kinds of things that slowly but surely we're going to have to address. Now, back to Beach Dog. I think it was wise of Jennifer to abandon the outdoors. When we spoke, I suggested that to her because I think there's another um, dog facility, dog care facility, that has abandoned their outdoor. So it would not be very fair to allow it here. So I'm happy that that waiver has been withdrawn, if I'm saying it correctly. To have one dog at a time, I don't know if that's going to be good or bad. 
Um, if it's a barking dog, it's not going to be good. You cannot muzzle dogs. I don't think you muzzle dogs. So, again, maybe the wrong business at the wrong place. When I spoke with Jennifer, she said it was not her property, so she did not see um, why she should ask to um, improve someone else's property in order to facilitate what had been suggested, that I thought had been suggested by the um, uh, development neighborhood or the planning services. Gen um, Anthea mm -hmm. had given suggestions, and that's what we're looking at today. So their choices, and, oh, no, let's not forget the fines. Um, we do a lot of fining in this city, but we don't do a lot of collecting. So I'm interested as to when and if we're ever going to be serious about that, just an aside. And back to the alley, I didn't complete. That is, in my opinion, a situation that I don't understand how the property owners aren't fighting to the city or someone to remove all of the debris and trees and sure. other clutter in the... You, I'm sorry, I need to interrupt you because we're kind of going off topic right now. Okay. And so I don't want to veer off. I'll bring it back. I just, think, I just think there's a situation there that we need to address. It's danger to the neighborhood, beach dog, no beach dog, the residents. So that being said, I'm sorry I got off topic, but I have to say it when I can say it. Um, I don't know if um, Jennifer is, she said she's willing to do the insulation now, um, no outdoors, and I don't think boarding dogs in this facility, in this situation, is the best thing for us to uh, be in favor of. So if everyone is in agreement and the neighbors are willing to allow her to insulate the building, no dogs outside, I don't know that, and I would like to make it conditional. So if she wants to make um, the investment, whoever's going to make the investment to make it a conditional use and revisit the situation in the near future. That would be my recommendation. So it, just so we're clear, I think you were saying that, because it is a conditional use, it's not by right. So that's why she's here today. Are you suggesting that you would like to give it for a limited amount of time? I think that's right. And then, and then there would be, she'd have to come back with a modification to extend the use going forward. No, I don't think that's what I'm saying. I think I'm saying that some major investment will have to be made to the building. That, that's her And that's, anyway. that's not conditional use. That's not what she's asking. Okay, then that's I'm... The, the site plan application, if she gets a conditional use this evening, and all you're determining is what kind of business can she have? Can she have okay. the grooming? Can she have the overnight boarding? Can she have the hotel? That's what you're deciding today. If she moves, if she, if she gets an approval, the next step is she's going to go to SPRAB, and as part of the site plan, she's going to have to make all these modifications. So that's what's required by code. So that And that may come before you um, at a later point in time. But I think Ms. Johnson's concern is that, and if forgive me if you oh, don't mind. Quite. I think Help what she's me. saying is she's concerned that code, if I may, hasn't been effective. So we, when you're saying temporary, you mean so that because we all know if we give a conditional use, we have a very hard time taking it back. So if the applicant does not comply, then... We've given it to her. Correct. And that is why I believe Attorney Jellen was saying, what you, I, I'm trying to clarify what you're suggesting. I was saying that I might be amenable to giving it on a temporary basis so that we can assess the situation, make sure the neighbors are satisfied because it's important to us, retain the business, dogs have a place to go, and I'm happy about that, and Jennifer has the opportunity to continue on. And if, if she doesn't comply, then what happens in the period of time, say we deem six months appropriate, and there is no so we're compliance. giving conditional use for six months? We can do it in a time frame if we like. The code allows you, uh, candidly, I, I think the amount of investment that she would have to make becomes a business decision, obviously. Six months might be too short, so. 
I would I wouldn't be in, I wouldn't be in favor. We have processes in place that if you're you're not following um, the guidelines or if you don't do what you said you would do, I they haven't been effective thus far, though. I mean, the fines we are. How many? How? I, no one ever mentioned how much the fines are. Because so she has daily fines. They're one hundred and fifty dollars a day. Right. They have. Um, I think code. I don't know if Mr. Walther was here. He was going to give me the number. And just so we're clear, she was initially fined March twenty third of twenty twenty. So this mm. went back. To, so she was she was violated at the very onset. Now remember, we went through COVID. We had a lot of issues, and it wasn't just the city that fined her. It was the county. So she had county cases as well as city issues as well. The goal of code enforcement is always compliance. So a court right. board is always going to tell you, if you can come into compliance, you can always come back and we can do fine mitigation, lien mitigation, whatever it is, but you have to come into compliance. The reason why this has taken so long is because the commission directed staff to change our code and to come up with something that is is relevant to modern day because as you may recall our code was a little bit antiquated i know we don't like that word so we brought the Perfect code changes to you we brought them before all the boards and that got approved and then miss roselli had to make her application to the city so this did take a long time only because the commission directed staff hey take a look at this and then a subsequent code change came before you but her fines are still accruing She's still going to go before the code board. Frankly, the fact that that outdoor use is still there, that's problematic because she, one of her violations is her site plan, and she should not have anything out there at all. So she may not be using the area, but the fact that it's not consistent with the site plan is a problem. The other thing I'm going to say, and I think Mr. Roselli acknowledged this, is that the, the zoning certificate of use that she obtained from the city was very clear. It was crystal clear. And so it told her what she could and could not do. She made a decision, it resulted in code violations, but from staff's perspective, there's only so much that your city staff can do, you know, especially code enforcement. They're not the police. They did what they could. They issued a violation, they brought it before the board, the board agreed and violated her, and she's gonna have to face that issue separate and apart from whatever you do here today. So, Ms. Johnson, if I may, if if you were considering temporary and we could determine what that means in terms of what it would take for her to facilitate making move. this place what or, it needs to or be. Or a move. Right, or a move. You would still be protecting the neighbors and you would still be allowing her to provide the service that the residents appreciate. I'm not happy about the code enforcement situation. It's disappointing to me when people don't follow the rules. Um, I do agree that it may be a challenge to find a new location for her to service, you know, the residents. But I'm, I wouldn't be, I'm not with you, Ryan. I won't vote to just do this based on the history and the lack of compliance. Absolutely not. Okay, so did you get yours in? I want to go ahead and speak. I, I think I've covered everything. I'm, right. I'm. Okay, so I'm going to start off with number one. Thank um, you. I wanted to make sure that, and I think you made it very clear, there was a license here to operate in a certain capacity that was violated. And it was violated from almost day one. So that's the reason why code started vi issuing violations. If somebody wasn't aware of their situation, um, they would ask why am I getting these violations? So, so th there was very much an awareness there, okay? There's nobody that can come to me and tell me that there wasn't an awareness because otherwise, uh, I, I just can't believe that, um, especially a, an astute business owner. Um, there are active code violations, obviously, because of the fact that uh, the violation, the, the de decision to continue for years in this capacity um, was, was not, not abandoned okay because i believe that in you know in the potential of what this business was really planned on being was not necessarily what they had actually got the license for which was grooming not even day grooming 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 services so it wasn't a daycare with day dog care it wasn't um hotel didn't have any it, well no it was it was a plan from the beginning so 
I know that there was somebody that came up here and talked about how there was this was very difficult for this particular owner and that she's done everything she can in order to be able to come into compliance. I have to tell you, I don't, I don't, that doesn't sit well with me because I know what's happened here. And there were no evolving laws. The laws were the laws when she came in. The difference is, is that this board decided to change things to see if we could get some compliance or some laws in, in place to allow for this type of business. Not necessarily here, but along that corridor because we weren't even allowing it along the corridor and we knew that this was a business that needed to be done. The way that the city came about was they put it together through a lot of hard work and effort as each dog continued to violate the laws. These laws didn't change. She came in, she knew what she was coming in to do, she knew what the rules were, and she started getting cited. So whatever you guys have heard out there that we have tried to shift and move is not true. We're shifting in her direction, not away from her direction, but towards her direction. So I just want to make that clear to everybody because I've read the, the you know, Facebook posts and things that one of my colleagues brought up. So I'm very much on the fence with respect to whether or not this does adversely uh, affect the neighbors. I, don't, I do think it does. I also feel like there is a spe special privilege here. However, that said, I think that there is a middle of the ground, or middle, middle of the road, and I'm willing to go down it. But I'm only willing to go down it on a temporary basis because um, Beach Dog has not proven to me over the years, they are trustworthy to take this out further and have what you guys have recorded, dogs that are not barking. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm pretty just, you know, kind of like a basic person, take my cues on what happens. People do not come in and complain and go out of their way and spend hours in a meeting complaining about a dog facility unless it's bothering them. If there's no, no barking happening at that facility, and never has, why would people come in here, taking up their time, neighbors, and just sit there and, complain, and, and, and come to us making these complaints that don't exist? They exist. So I've had neighbors that had barking dogs, and it doesn't happen at the times that you guys are recording. It can happen at 3 a.m. That wakes you up for the rest of the day. I know that these, this couple of the neighbors have come in here, and I mean, my heart goes out to them because there's nothing worse than not getting sleep or getting woken up in the middle of your sleep every single night, and and not being able to get a good solid, you know, night's worth of sleep. There is something that's called peaceful enjoyment, and they have the right to that. They did not buy their homes behind a business was allowed to have a dog kennel. And if there was a dog kennel approval there, they may have not bought their home there. Just like my colleague up here, uh, the vice mayor stated, he knew where he was buying. He knew he was buying on a road, a busy road, that was going to be hearing a lot of noise. He chose that. These guys didn't. So it does change that dynamic. Um, when you're bringing in a business that's not allowed and then goes and per persists to allow for this barking and um, continual harassment towards the neighbors. As to the business that was there before, someone said that it was an awful business and that's came in. No, it wasn't. It was a beautiful beach store. I mean, it was a furniture store. I used to go to it. It was gorgeous. Yeah. And the interior of that store is not unlike what you guys are experiencing. I think maybe there's some alterations, but it was beautiful. So that wasn't a rundown store. I, I used to go there. It was very, in fact, it was so expensive I couldn't buy from there. But anyway, um, this is a story for another day. Um, so I am of the opinion, as some of my colleagues up here, I do want to see the, I, I know it's a business that does give us uh, a service. I know that it's a service that is important to our community. I'm willing to do an, uh, for the what, what P&Z basically said, which was the 7 o'clock in the morning until 7 p.m. at night. No overnight. I want it to be condition. I want it to be conditional, not conditional, limited for one year. 
Let's see how they behave from this point forward. There's no outdoor space. And I'll tell you, if the dogs generally bark inside, we're going to get the uh, complaints, and I'll be here at that point in time, and I'll make sure that I make it strong, strong from my perspective that we don't approve the permanent um, condition. I mean, I'll be up here just advocating a way for the community. And I do that because, again, if any of you guys were in the same situation where you had a you know, uh, you know, a noise uh, situation behind your house that woke you up, you would want somebody to be in these positions advocating for you. And as a matter of fact, I, I can tell you, one woman that actually called me, it's friends and I think takes her dog there, she had a situation where we had a drum circle that had moved out, out over to uh, Veterans Park. And every single Sunday night until 10 p.m., they're drumming those drums. Very unfortunate, and it's very difficult for somebody to have to live with that. So I explained to her, just as we dis did not allow any longer that drum group to continue to you know, intrude on your peaceful enjoyment, it's the same situation here with the dogs behind a ha houses that basically people should be allowed to enjoy their peaceful enjoyment. So from my perspective, I think it's a year of wait what I would be comfortable with. I would be comfortable with um, seven to seven as the uh, planning and zoning board um, agreed to, but I would not agree to a, a hotel overnight. Okay, may I ask? Sure. Why a year? Well, because I think six months is not long enough, and I think that if they're going to change things to make this work for them long term, um, and they want to have that time frame to to make those alterations. They should be given that time frame to be able to get that in. It's going to be their decision as far as a business decision. I don't want it to be too short, and that's a that's a very expensive endeavor that they would be going down. And I want them to be successful. I do. I want the you know them to find their way to being successful with that. So I, I don't want to I don't want to shortchange it. And it also but, might give them an opportunity to find a better location because the the, well, the it's a business dynamic. Decision in this community now I think it's going to be a little very difficult for her yeah. so. so let me ask another question about the um, about the the uh, they will have to still go before the board about the, for the code violations if in fact um, we do this it, does it negate the code violations no okay no, I don't want that to happen good. because I think that that is important for people to understand that when you're going to break the rules you must also pay the price for that I mean it's not okay I think it would that. just serve to mitigate whatever the fines are right. on the fact that they came in. Well, I'm okay with that. I just wanted to make sure it doesn't go away. So if anybody would like just, to make a motion or if I just have one, one question before sure. a motion is made. Uh, Ms. Jenlin, can you just review what we're supposed to take into account and if uh, Anthea even has um, her normal slide up there on what we're voting on? I just want to make sure that we're not voting or if we should be taking into account their lack of compliance over the last few years or their actions on social media. You know, the actions on social media, I would I would venture to say that's not evidence before you. So the no. postings haven't been brought before you. So I would probably ask you to disregard those. Um, I, th I think the actions do um, do come into play because it's going to show you whether or not the, whatever conditions you impose are going to be complied with. Mm -hmm. So I do think that that does come into play, and I, I think it should be considered. Your findings are that the conditional use will not have a significantly detrimental effect upon the stability of the neighborhood within which it will be located and or hinder development or redevelopment of nearby properties. The conditional use um, provision allows you to impose conditions in order to ensure that you know the impacts are mitigated and things like that. Okay, well I appreciate you um, clarifying that for me. Because of that clarification, I would be in favor of the review in one year. So I'll offer a motion to that effect. Motion to approve the conditional use request with a limitation of hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and no outdoor use or overnight boarding with a uh, look back in one year. Is that the right verbiage? Let's get a second. What's that? Second. Thank you. Okay, okay so we're going to approve resolution 58-22, subject to the um, amendments that uh, Dep or Vice Mayor Frankel just proposed. Um, and essentially, it's not really a look back. You're granting a conditional use for one year, um, subject to the code, which would require a modification after if they wanted to continue with the conditional use. So, so to clarify, 
uh, with the language provided by our city attorney. That would and, be my motion. And so just so I understand um, um, clearly that it is an, it, there is no guarantee that it goes on be, beyond that one year. If there's if there's dereliction of uh, we can we can abandon that. Well, th they would come in for a modification, right, and before. we can deny it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Excuse me, may I just, should we make it 8 p.m., 7 a.m. to 8 p.m.? It's based on this. Well, I think the code actually is 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., so that's. Right. I feel like that would be more appropriate. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a problem. If you're offering an amendment, I will yes, accept it. I am offering an amendment to us. I'll Thank accept you. the amendment. Seven Mr. Johnson. I'd like to um, ask the Attorney Jellin to go back to, and I don't know who has the clicker who's doing it, the, the slide before this that said we had to find oh. Oh, the two findings. Yeah. Yes, ultimate uh, conditional use findings have a significantly detrimental effect upon the stability of the neighborhood within which it will be located. Um, this is something that we would have to say yes or no to. Am I correct? Well, in, a, in approving the conditional use, you're saying that the, that the request doesn't. does not have a significantly detrimental effect upon the stability of the neighborhood. You're specifically making that finding. I think Mr. Costello would I like just, to say yes, something. For I don't know. It's well, it's board discussion, so it's up to the board. I, I'm Did willing to let him that? speak. It rather complicates it because if you say it does, it has a significant the detrimental effect upon the stability of the neighborhood, then you should vote no. Correct. Correct. But here, here's, here's how I'm looking at it. Um, it may or may not. Let's see. We'll give it a year. Ms. Johnson, not sure. if I may, it's only till 8 p.m. Yeah. Well, have they said yes, that the barking was only between, seven till 8 it was PM. only after 8? Pardon me? Or 7 or 8? Is the, na or the neighbors complaining? We don't know. I mean, we. I think we're, we're making an assumption that the complaints by the neighbors were not doing the daytime hours. I think what you have to do is you ha have to make that decision based on what you feel. And I'm saying, in my, to myself, that I think that this is going to not be that detrimental um, effect on the stability. But I'm also limiting the time frame so that we can see that it really doesn't because then we can go back and say no to it if it does. Uh, it, it, to me, it gives me kind of a two-way. Security. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're, you're mitigating the impacts by limiting, limiting right. the hours, not allowing the overnight. So remember, it's significantly detrimental. So if you find that it's detrimental, it may not be significantly detrimental, but you also have the ability to impose conditions on the use, like what you're doing this evening, to ensure that um, the impact is not the impacts are mitigated. Mm -hmm. So we've changed we the motion a, to sorry, go seven. Can, we get a, can I get some clarity? So I think it's seven a.m. to eight p.m. Correct. No overnight um, boarding Correct. in Correct. one year. And no, no outdoor, outdoor use. use. And no outdoor use. Right. In one year. In one year. Thank you. Okay. So I, we have a motion and a second. Is there any more discussion? We have a motion and a second on those. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All the roll. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Boylston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? No. Okay, thank you. Can I just clarify? I, did we motion second to eight? I don't think we yeah. did. Yes. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. Okay, he, thank he amended. you. You said it and I accepted your amendment. Okay, you accepted the amendment. Got Mayor, it. because somebody asked the accrued fines are at $13,950. Mm. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So moving on, if anybody wants to leave, you can. Uh, otherwise, you can hang out with us. Uh, ordinance number 2-22. An ordinance of the, oh, actually, Mayor, I think 8A and 8B, I'm going to read them together. Okay. Because they're the same. An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Delray Beach, Florida, adopting a small-scale land use map amendment for an unaddressed parcel of land located on the west side of Southeast 3rd Avenue between East Atlantic Avenue and Southeast 1st Street with a parcel control number of 12-43-46-16-01-085-0050 that measures approximately 0 .1109 acres, as more particularly described herein, redesignating said land from community facilities to commercial co or pursuant to the provisions of the Community Planning Act, 
Florida Statute Section 163.3187, providing a conflicts clause and a severability clause, providing an effective date and for other purposes. Ordinance number 03-22, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Delray Beach, Florida, rezoning and redesignating land approximately 0.1109 acres in size, presently zoned community facilities to Central Business District within the Central Core Subdistrict for an undressed parcel located on the west side of Southeast 3rd Avenue between East Atlantic Avenue and Southeast 1st Street with a parcel control number of 12-43-46-16. Dash 01 dash 085 dash 0050, as more particularly described herein. Amending the City of Delray Beach zoning map July 6, 2021, correcting the Scrivener's error in figure 4.4.13 dash B1, Central Core and Beach Subdistricts Regulating Plan of the Land Development Regulations to maintain the parcel as part of the Central Core Subdistrict, providing a conflicts clause and a severability clause, providing an effective date and for other purposes. This is second reading. All right. Hi, good evening. Um, for the record, my name is Christina Belenke, and I'm here representing the property owner. Um, so this is the subject property that we are discussing today. It is located on the west side of Southeast 3rd Avenue, approximately 200 feet south of Atlantic Avenue. Um, in 1990, um, well, let me back up for a second. Uh, the existing land use is currently CF. It's shown in the blue on your screen. We're proposing to amend that to CC. As you can see, the entire uh, the entirety of the area around it is has the CC land use designation, um, not just this block, but the majority of the downtown area. Um, and the existing zoning is also CF, and we are proposing to bring that into the CBD as well. And again, you can see this blue sliver is the only parcel with the CF zoning maintained in this area. Um, so prior to 1990, the property was zoned CBD. Um, in 1990, as a part of a citywide rezoning, it was rezoned to CF, and in 2002, um, the city's downtown master plan actually identified the property um, alongside a, a much larger parcel uh, that could accommodate future multimodal transit, a multimodal transit station with the train station, bus station, local transit terminal, and parking. Um, at this point in time, the only parcel with a CF uh, land use and zoning designation is just over a tenth of an acre, 0 0.11 acres, so clearly cannot accommodate that anymore. Um, in 2018, the city actually approved a tri-rail coastal link transit-oriented development master plan, which identified parcels on the north side of Atlantic Avenue behind Johnny Brown's for that purpose. Um, so this area was no longer contemplated. Um, and in May of 2019, the city actually approved a future land use map amendment and rezoning for the parcel immediately north, um, leaving this parcel as the only area designated uh, CF. Um, so just quickly, I, I think a lot of it is fairly straightforward considering the downtown area and um, I, again that this sliver is essentially the only uh, 0.11 acre piece that retains the CF zoning, but in terms of the land use map amendment findings, um, the resulting use of the land must be allowed in the zoning district within which the land is situated and said zoning must be consistent with the applicable land use designation. Jeff Brown. <laughs> is now exiting. <laughs> All right. Late. Um, the trigger there. So again, um, all adjacent parcels and all, all parcels within the surrounding blocks share the CBD and uh, commercial core land use designation, CBD zoning designation. Um, the staff report that is included as your backup goes through multiple um, goals, policies, and objectives that um, is consistent with this request as well. Oops, oh, sorry. Going back here. Um, in terms of concurrency, again, I'd point to the staff report in showing you how the request complies with the adopted level of service standards. Um, those are standards met for school, water, solid waste, drainage, parks, open space, traffic. Um, it is consistent with the performance standards and, again, with the objectives, objectives and policies in the adopted comprehensive plan. Um, and changing the land use designation from CF to CC 
would establish a consistent blocks in a consistent block in terms of the land use and zoning along East Atlantic Avenue and Southeast Third Avenue. And so the potential uses would be compatible with the existing uses surrounding the subject site. And that's noted in your staff report as well. And in terms of the compliance with the LDRs, um, we actually do have a site plan modification in process that includes this parcel, um, which is being reviewed for compliance. In terms of the rezoning criteria that must be met, um, there are three options, one of which needs to be met. I, we feel we are meeting two of the criteria. The first in that there has been a change in circumstance which makes the current zoning inappropriate. Again, uh, initially back in the early 2000s, this was intended for a transportation hub. Um, that is no longer the case. In 2018, the city approved a different location on the north side of Atlantic Avenue. And so this is really a sliver that's left into the CF zoning. Um, now it's considered essentially spot zoning because there's nothing else around it with that zoning designation. So this really is more of a cleanup item. Um, and then the requested zoning is of similar intensity as allowed under the future land use map and is more appropriate for the property based on circumstances particular to the site or the neighborhood. Um, and again, with the proposed amendment to the CC land use designation, the CBD is actually the preferred zoning designation. Um, it is consistent with the surrounding properties and will allow for more appropriate uses and development patterns and a more cohesive streetscape than the CF zoning designation would. And so the required uh, findings for rezoning are noted above. Uh, the first two actually do not apply. Um, the third one, uh, zoning changes would result in strip commercial development shall be avoided. Um, the CBD is a mixed use district and award winning form based code that does not allow for strip development and it supports mixed use development. So by rezoning the property, we'd be able to incorporate uh, the property and proposed development that is more in line with the downtown uh, area. And then two more. Uh, required rezoning findings. Uh, the last one again does not apply, but at the top of your screen, rezoning of land uh, shall result in allowing land uses deemed compatible with adjacent and nearby land uses, both existing and proposed. Um, and again, the form-based code techniques strive to create a customized downtown development pattern that is consistent with this area, which allows for a variety of commercial and office uses, uh, which are ultimately proposed for the site. Um, and the CBD will allow for more appropriate uses and development, development types in the downtown area that will result in a more cohesive streetscape and downtown development pattern. And with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Thank you. From Anthea. Okay, so I will try to go quickly not to um, replicate um, what you've gotten from the applicant. Um, I do uh, want to clarify just a couple things related to the Scrivener's error as well, which is um, how the um, regulating plan um, figure is um, affected by this. Um, so what, again, there are two ordinances before you. They do have to be voted separately. One is the land use amendment. The other is the rezoning. It is this leftover parcel that is currently unaddressed. Um, in downtown, it's got a land use designation of community facilities and a zoning designation of community facilities. Um, and Ordinance 0222 would um, change the land use designation to commercial core, like the balance of downtown. And the rezoning uh, from... Uh, or the rezoning would change community facilities to um, central business district with the central core subdistrict. And as you can see, it is an island of CF that is next to the FEC railroad corridor on the south side of Atlantic um, behind uh, what is currently the PR2 project that is approved. It's across from the new Delray Beach Market. Um, and so with this change, both the land use map and the zoning map would um, just reflect a consistent land use and zoning on the block. Um, the, um, the code for downtown utilizes a regulating plan for each of the sub-districts. It establishes things like where's a primary street, where do you have to have ground level retail and other things like that. Um, and at some point, the uh, Central Core regulating plan actually indicated this parcel, it's probably a GIS map, 
there was a transition like we've been dealing with on multiple maps from AutoCAD into GIS that already designated um, this uh, parcel as um, commercial core. When it's not, this is the Scrivener's error that will be corrected with the ordinance that does the rezoning. When you rezone into CBD, we have to amend the regulating plan because it does provide a key to the zoning district rules. So this ordinance will um, officially adopt what is already reflected on the map. And that was the only thing that I think was a little bit odd that you had to um, consider in both the ordinances. Um, and um, again, uh, the valid reasons for the change have been, I think, accurately presented by the applicant. Um, like all rezonings and land use, um, we look at it in relation to Chapter 3. Your staff report provides a full, full background. Um, in terms of um, sort of the similar land use, community facility, of course, is rather unique. Um, it doesn't have a density a attached to it. It's got an FAR of 1. The shift to commercial core does adopt the mixed use standards of downtown, which is a slight increase or is an increase on the, the parcel. Um, and while the concurrency submittal requires that it be maxim, maximum um, potential, what actually fits on the lot, you know, we reevaluate that as the actual project comes in. And it is located within the transportation concurrency exception area directly across the street from ultimately where a downtown train station will hopefully take place on public property in the future. Um, and again, I agree with um, the applicant's characterization. This, um, these ordinances did go before a number of um, advisory boards. Um, the Planning and Zoning Board, of course, um, is charged with the official land use recommendation, and it received a 520 recommendation of approval, both ordinances. I'm here if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Could you just back up one slide uh, or two? Thank you. Thanks. I, I always get nervous when I see 1,935 trips a day, I'll be honest, even 787. But obviously, I mean, it looks like this is something that we should be doing. So the way that um, this works for land use is that um, they take a three FAR and mm -hmm. they apply it. Um, this is a pretty small parcel in terms of also having right. to park a use. So you will see the numbers again when an actual um, site plan approval comes in as okay. well. So yeah. thank you. I'm sorry, transportation is spelled wrong. I was going to ask that. that's trans <laughs> transpiration. Transpiration? <laughs> transportation, okay. I'll just, uh, I'll fix that while we're here. I didn't catch it. That's so funny. And it's not underlined in red. It must be a word. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Or just, apologies. this is a public hearing, so we need to open it up. Oh, well, Anthea sorry. cleans up her slot. You know, well, I know. I'm, I'm, out like, order. Now okay. I'm not sure apologize. I can do it. I'm too <laughs> okay. blind. All right, so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to anybody who would like to speak to this issue, um, either um, Ordinance 02-22 or 03-22. If anybody is here that would like to speak to either, um, please step forward, state your name, address, and you'll have three minutes. Seeing no one moving, public comment is closed. Uh, you know, I think that it was left over. I don't know. I was, I was going to ask you a question just because it kind of caught me off guard. It's not really spot zoning because it was left behind. I mean, spot zoning, isn't that where you go out and you grab a I mean, parcel and you try to just mm -hmm. put that in there and be, you know, become the, you know, the one thing out there? This was kind of left behind. All of that area there was at one time CF. Mm -hmm. So it was just a, par a parcel of land that was left behind because there was d two different owners exactly. and one wouldn't go down the path of changing it at that point in time and now everything is, is changing. Is, am I correct? Yes. All right, very good. Um, I'm not going to stop it. I just wanted to make sure that we were understanding because it's not like we're spot zoning here. All right, so if we have nothing else to say, then I'll entertain a motion on both. Motion to approve. Motion to oh, did you have something? Wait, 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 go ahead. County of Sal Wounds. Motion oh, to approve O2. That's right. deep. Dash 2 2. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Frankel. Yes. Ms. Cassell. Yes. Mr. Boylston. Yes. Ms. Johnson. Yes. Mayor Petrolia. Yes. Motion to approve 0322. Second. Second. Call the roll, please. Second. Great. 
Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Ms. DeFranco? Yes. All right, moving on to um, uh, the Ordinance 17-22. Uh, An ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Delray Beach, Florida, amending the Code of Ordinances by amending Title V, Public Works, Chapter 52, Water, Subheading, Rates, Charges, and Fees, Section 52.34, Water Rates, Subsection B, Monthly Rates, Increasing the Rates for Water Furnished by the City, amending Chapter 53, Sanitary Sewers, Subheading, User Change and Industrial Cost Recovery System, Section 53.130, User Charges, Wholesale Sewer Rates, Calculation of Sewer Surcharge, Subsection D, Rates and Charges, Increasing the Sanitary Sewer Service Charges, Amending Chapter 59, Reclaimed Water, Section 59.09, Fees, Rates, and Charges, to reference the commodity charges in Section 52.34, Water Rates, Providing a Conflicts Clause, Providing a Severability Clause, Authority to Codify, and Providing an Effective Date, and this is first reading. Yeah, it's first reading, so we can just go forward if... Second. Call the roll, please. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes. Mr. Bolston? Yes. Okay, moving on to comments and inquiries on non-agenda items, city manager. Madam Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, I have one item briefly, and that is the Palm Beach County League of Cities is extending an invitation to have the city of Derby Beach host this September 2022 meeting here in our community. So although arrangements are being made to facilitate that to take place at the Opal Grand, I think it would be appropriate for a consensus and support to be offered publicly on part of the city commission. So if I may ask you to do so, please, yes. that would be great. Thank you. I'd just like to say something. I don't know if any of you remember when the last time it was that Delray hosted. You know, I, I thought we, when was it? I would say Arch Garage. Was it Arch Garage? No, June I think. June 2017 at the Delray Beach Golf Club. Okay. I remember Arch Garage, but it must have been before that. Time Very well. Well, the other update or comment good. is advanced best wishes for a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank All you. right, city Are attorney. Um, we had our first sound walk for the noise ordinance uh, last Wednesday. Um, we had 22 people come out, so it was uh, very productive and exciting. I had to cancel the one on Saturday um, due to the weather. Mm -hmm. So the next sound walk will be this Saturday, May 7th. We'll meet at the lobby of City Hall at 8.45 p.m. And the sound walk takes about an hour. Um, Mr. Long volunteered himself, so hopefully he'll be able to come on Saturday. Very good. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. And to the commission, start on this end. Oh, so I have an item on the agenda. I don't know if anyone noticed Oh, yeah, that, I saw that. Very exciting under our new rules. Um, my item is um, a motion to direct staff to obtain a study for innovative and diverse housing types. And so, you know, if you've, I'm sure we've all read the uh, comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. There's a section about housing uh, element and it's backup information that talks about affordability housing through innovative and uh, diverse housing types. And the problem, you know, we have, and I think everybody knows this is, we have limited land. So we have to figure out how to maximize it efficiently. And one of the ways is to consider these tiny homes on you know, lots that maybe aren't uh, conforming at this point in time. Now, obviously, we have our restrictions based on the fact that they would be required to be workforce, and we would continue to implement that. But basically, um, uh, and then cottage homes, which is a concept that uh, is also involves smaller homes and creating a community. Um, I met with uh, Anthea and Attorney Jellen and, and uh, Renee from the CRA. And the reason why Renee was included was because I was talking about this as part of what I'd like to see incorporated into the CRA plan, but also because the CRA does have some money set aside to um, review accessory dwelling units. We also have a fair amount of property in the CRA district, which could accommodate housing styles like this. So basically, um, I'm hoping you'll consider a motion to direct staff to obtain a study. This is consistent with our comprehensive plan, and it would help us to provide additional workforce housing 
potentially some affordable housing and definitely attainable housing. So let me ask a question because I know that last meeting I think I asked for a study and every, I think we got consensus. But it's different. I this is. So can it be done? You know, I don't think so. This would have to be done by Treasure Coast. What you're talking about is our housing stock, number of apartments, number of houses, and the like. I don't think this would be something that you could combine together. I don't know that that would be. Okay, so. Do we know how much this would be? Well, Anthea has a particular budget in her um, department, which she can, I believe, use. And Anthea, and when, when you come up, just so I can load you up with my question, um, <laughs> last, last year at goal setting, we talked yeah. about overlay districts, one of them being in the set to look at housing, look at duplex, look at cottage housing, and yes. alternatives like that. So I just want to know where that is, we're a year later. So it's, so, okay, so when Anthea has money, <laughs> Anthea, um, okay, so first of all, um, this doesn't require Treasure Coast, Treasure Coast Regional Planning. Oh, I'm sorry. Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council is assisting the CRA right now in their redevelopment plan. Correct, and I didn't so, mean to overlap the two. Right, but they have a certain skill set that um, right. Renee might be able to tap toward this end and towards the other affordable housing issues that we're facing. Um, so ultimately tackling these types of issues is why most of my staff wanted to be planners. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, there's money and time that mm -hmm. are all what we're competing with and we are spending um, most of our focus on the transition to electronic plan review mm -hmm. is taking staff support to do that on a weekly basis. It is the number one priority to try to start um, moving us towards that more efficient system for all of our customers. So um, this study um, would, um, I think we were talking about partnering with the CRA. They have already have um, interest in this issue has been brought up at goal setting before. It's accessory dwelling units and other things are important. They do have to be analyzed on a neighborhood basis based on our comp plan so we don't drop things in. People aren't expecting next door. We know that doesn't always go well. Mm -hmm. So um, so this can be a priority. I think the issue for the commission, and maybe it's something for goal setting, is it, everything can't be a priority. So we really have to get a, a rank because there's only so much time and money each year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's where we are. Um, we're excited about the prospect of studying this. It is directed by the comp plan. It has been brought up by previous um, discussions. Um, so we would like to move forward, but, you know, e-plan review, change, streamline the process. Well, I think that you have Workforce housing, stay, you know. You've got so. to stay on target to get your e-plan review yeah. done. I mean, I'm, you know, we keep throwing things at everybody, and then, and then we expect things to get done, and then we're disappointed that they're not getting done, but right. it's because we're kind of continuing to throw things at you guys. So right. And so if I would say worst case scenario, it's next fiscal year. We can right. see what resources okay. financially yes. are available to reach out. Um, my staff has already gone to work identifying, you know, several consultants that would be excellent resources for this type of effort, which we've been talking about mm -hmm. for a while. The CRA is on board to be a partner if there's, right. you know, potentially some ability to augment funding. But again, it just it just goes to we need to go back and count the beans that are left for this year and then see right. when we can tackle it. And I wouldn't want you to take away from what you're currently doing. That's why we were talking about right. a consultant. Okay. But listen, I do think it's critically important because we are we do have a, a desperate need for housing. And this could accommodate that need. So uh, you know, maybe we will discuss it at goal setting. Would it be possible for you to provide us? I know that I'm the one always throwing these projects at you because I want we wanted to address the overgrown homes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you potentially? Would you mind just maybe giving us a list of the things that we've been asking you to do so we could? Then we can prioritize them. them. Yeah. Just honestly, I need that from you. So we've already started making, yeah. and there are also. Honestly, state legislative things we are required to do. Our right. year is due in December. Mm -hmm. um, other legislative changes like home-based businesses. Um, for anybody watching and wondering about the affordable housing, housing crisis, our state mm -hmm. legislation has preempted us right. from having a percentage required for new development. Right. We're not allowed to do that. We only do it through incentives. That's right. why we do the density. Mm -hmm. So there's things like that that we have to tackle and make sure that we're in compliance as well. So. And that may be why this is critical, because this would be on non-conforming lots, and we could... You have a... Exactly. It would be a new um, 
it would be a new arrow or set of arrows in our quiver. Right. And so we absolutely think we need to do it. It's it's just what are we doing first? Be a big, you know. Yes. It's okay. It's just resources, and we'll allocate them, and we'll figure it out. It's just a question of whether it's this year or after October. Perfect. Thank you so sure. much. I, I'm in favor of that definitely being. I'm sure it already was going a priority to be on our list in our yeah. Um, yeah. Our meeting coming up. What is it next? Is that next Friday? Correct, sir. Yes. So next Friday, and it was on our list last year, and I know it is something that I will definitely want to see prioritized. Okay. Um, did you have something you wanted to add to that? Yeah, I'll I'll let her finish. But I, uh, are you finished? No. I think uh, do you want me to go on with my other? Oh, did you have anything to add to her comment about that? Or well, I was just going to thank her for constantly throwing projects out. Um, I, I think part of the problem is, and I spoke with our moderator and told her that I think we should go back to what we were saying in 2017 and let's see what's there. Mm -hmm. um, Deputy Vice Mayor, you would be surprised at the number of things we've asked for. Yeah. And five years yeah, later, did. we are finally getting uh, Anthea, who keeps disappearing into the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I know she doesn't like to be up here. Um, we're just getting automated systems and so, I just don't think I dream more. big. I'm with you, though. I understand. I know we have, you know, our goal setting will probably incorporate most of the things that we discussed last year. But right. I do not to be think discouraged is all no, I'm saying. And, exactly. and just to understand that your list is going to grow. And before you leave, you. hopefully it will be somewhere down the road. But uh, things like that, we can only do so much at a time. I finally found out. All right. You're Deputy right. Vice Mayor, continue. Oh, thank you. So well, let's, um, on that one, so are we just going to table that to goal setting? Yeah. yeah. Yes, that's fine. Uh, I had a question about Beach Dog, and this might be for our assistant chief. When I was reading all those police reports, um, one of them talked about patrol vehicles. Do our um, officers on the off-duty use our patrol vehicles for uh, their own jobs? Are you saying yes? Y yes. Okay. Um, is that typical? I'm sorry, but I'm just not sure mm -hmm. if that's typical. They're, they're entitled to use the, their vehicles for personal use. Um, it's actually something that we're going to be discussing later this so, week. But it concerns me if they're working for Beach Dog. And there's also someone made a claim that the police were no longer taking complaints. That's a whole other issue. I think somebody, Mr. Moore, you should perhaps um, just clarify that because mm -hmm. that's not good for the residents to hear. But if you are working off-duty on your own in a city police vehicle, that has a particular look that I'm not sure is what we want. Well, it's called off-duty detail work. We have a contract with an outside agency. It, it's, it's managed through the police department. So the police, um, they go through the assignments. Look, this one fell through the cracks, right? Um, you know, I, I do think that there was a conflict of interest. You know, when somebody has enforcement proceedings involving right. the city and then we're providing an off-duty detail, I, I think there's a disconnect there. Mr. Moore and I spoke about it. Um, Chief Major and I spoke about it. And I think we're going to put things in place so that, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give a good image of the city, right? In one sense, you have code enforcement battling this business, and then our police is providing off-duty detail work. So I think, I think something fell through the cracks on that one. Um, we did have meetings. Uh, Chief Major, um, I think, is confident. I'm confident that he's going to make some changes to the process Thank you. to ensure that there's no further conflicts, because I do think that was a conflict of interest. And just to add, ladies and gentlemen, for additional assurance, direction to this effect was initiated less than a week ago. So we will proceed accordingly, and I think this will be a situation to not again be repeated. Right, thank you. Fabulous. OK. Um, SB 620, I know I brought this up. I'm remarkably concerned, and I think everybody should be. For those out there that don't know, Senate Bill 620, called the Local Business Act, is on its way to being signed into law. And um, it, I, I was surprised it wasn't signed in uh, because it should have really been by now. But when I talked to the League of Cities, they said there's just a slowdown. I was thinking the governor might have been reconsidering it. Um, but SB 620 provides that if a local government adopts a measure that in some way causes a business a reduction of 15% of its profits, and I mean, I, I ran a business, so I can tell you, you can manipulate your profits very easily. Uh, that business can sue the city, 
and recover the loss and collect attorney fees. So there are conditions. Business must have been in existence for four years. Law does not apply to emergency ordinances such as COVID, and it wouldn't apply to any eminent domain proceedings. But the bill is estimated to negatively impact taxpayers in Florida um, to the cost of about $900 million annually. That's concerning. Um, so I'm a lot of municipalities are sending requests to the governor to veto, and I think we should follow them. The county has done it, and I think we should do it immediately if you all are. I'm, I'm on favorite. board. Okay, thank you very much. So I appreciate so we, that. We, and I think we some can of do the a resolution yeah. um, for the mayor's signature opposing yeah. SB 620. Yep, in favor. Thank you so much. Um, okay. That's number two. Oh, I wanted to thank Mr. Moore. I gave you that um, extensive list of things that I'd like to see done in the city, and I appreciate you've been communicating with me and working on that list. Sam Meetot, um, the Barwick Park playground is amazing. I haven't gone on it because it's still fenced off, but I'm dying to, and I want to thank you and the entire team. Um, May is National Tennis Month. We have an amazing facility, so I think everybody should get out there with a racket and check it out. You're never too old to learn tennis. And lastly, I would like to recall a vote that we took on April 19th, um, 6B, the State Housing Initiatives Partnership Local Housing Assistance Plan, and here's why. When we were at the CRA meeting um, and we were discussing Pulte and the project, and there was this talk about converting from the 40 years to potentially 15, I realized that when we approved this, and I have my notes, excuse me for one moment. We approved under the consent agenda item um, 6B, and in that it reads, removal of the community land trust strategy, however, inclusionary language within the purchase assistance strategy will continue. And then if you go on to our first reading of 9A, uh, which was on the same evening, which is Ordinance 1022. It reads that we would, um, it reads that we would, hold on one second, refer to the report which we would be approving under 6B. And so I, th I would like to pull this for discussion and information purposes, because I wanna make sure we're not agreeing to, and the reason why I say that is I assume when something's on consent of this magnitude that, you know, we've, it's been sort of discussed. But at the meeting, when the uh, reduction of the protective covenant for the uh, workforce housing was discussed, clearly the two of you did not appear to be in favor. I'm certainly not in favor. So I think because this feeds into the other ordinance that we need to have a serious discussion on what the ramifications are. I, I mean, listen, does it implicate the, the covenant that we have? It, it implicates 9A, which is the ordinance 1022, um, I believe. Well, that was, that because was first it says, reading, so. Right, it was first reading, no, but, there but was if we don't discover, what we, discuss but we, 6B, because 6B is part of 9A, it says the proposed update makes corrective updates to bring the LDRs into compliance with the city's adoption of the local housing I, assistance plan. Listen, I, I think it's worth it to have the discussion. We don't have to have it tonight, but I'm, I'm fine. No, 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 we wouldn't have it tonight. So we would do a motion to re reconsider. What is it? What was the name of the item? Um, item 6B fr from April 19th. So I'd like a motion to reconsider April 19th. Item 6B, State Housing Initiatives Partnership, Local Housing Assistance Plan, LHAP, uh, 2022 to 2025. I think you can make the motion. Okay. I think she just did. I think I did. Is there a second? Yeah. Second. second. We can do a second for discussion. Yeah, I'm Thank just going to say, do we want to take the time for, like, I have a question just in regards to staff to explain to us why that was on there and what the... Well, I was going to recommend... Now, or we just well, I was going to recommend agenda. moving it to the next meeting, okay. yeah. and then okay. we can just put it on the regular agenda for the next meeting. Sounds yeah. good. That's okay. Fine. Thank you so much. Roll, I appreciate please. that consideration. Sorry. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mayor Petrolia? Yes. Mr. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Cassell? Yes, thank Mr. you. Mr. Boylston? Yes. And that's all I have seconds. this evening. Okay, very good. Um, thank you. Vice Mayor? Thank you. Um, following up on what um, 
uh, was talked about about the garbage situation that we've talked about last couple times. We all received an email uh, last Thursday from our director of neighborhood and community service, Sammy Welfire, mm -hmm. about they're discussing it and whatnot. What I didn't, I, I replied to staff, but I didn't share with the commission just out of the abundance of caution, was a picture of an overflowing garbage can I took uh, Wednesday night in Pineapple Grove. Mm -hmm. I think part of the solution might be new garbage cans. <laughs> um, you know, there's gotta be some easy answers to this. I mean, we, we've got a Wednesday night, nine o'clock, out of season in Pineapple Grove. Mm -hmm. um, it's an Not issue. Even on the I, avenue. I, I know we all, so just to keep that in the back of uh, everyone's mind, maybe we'll talk about it at goal setting, but mm -hmm. maybe new garbage cans is the answer. <laughs> actually, ladies and gentlemen, direction has actually been initiated for larger waste receptacles for the downtown vicinity, and we'll be examining that for other areas of the community as well. So as we engage in public updates, the budget process, and all those other considerations, we'll be providing specific dimensions. May I? Is, may there, is there somebody that's checking to see that these are being picked up? Um, yes, we've at, yes ma'am, we've actually, and again, all recent, we've actually expanded the amount of frequency in addition to larger trash receptacles and that the level of frequency has been expanded working with neighborhood and community services and other staff people to interface in that regard. So we've actually recently expanded the, the amount of time and number of days in which we are making collections and we are being more mindful relative to the timing as to when accumulation is most prevalent. Okay, my question is more of, is somebody following up to make sure that those, collection, those collections are taking place? Because it's very unusual to see a waste can overflowing when we're getting a, a, you know, a daily pickup it doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I almost feel like I'm going to go out there and sit and watch and make sure that it is because obviously I, I, I question that that's actually happening. Mayor, Sometimes, are, you, are you sure it's a daily? Are you sure well, it's a I, daily? I, I think that we, we, well, we've increased the number of times that we're picking up. So how often do we pick how up? How often do we pick it up? We recently expanded it daily during a weekday, Monday through Friday. So we are now, if I may please. Yeah, when it's really the next step, the big issues, of course, are the weekend. So we are now working to incorporate shifts for that time frame as well. Yeah. So we will be providing more specific updates as to how that all works. Mr. Walthour, your timing is impeccable. I need your assistance in supporting <laughs> what I'm sharing with the commission because we've recently visited about this to address exactly what we just talked about, including larger receptacles, as well as increased frequency for collection activities and monitoring. So if you can fill in the blanks for me, please, I think both myself and the city commission would be most appreciative. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Moore. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the uh, commission, Sam Walthour, Neighborhood and Community Services. Excuse my voice, please. Right. <clears throat> Waste management picks up every day, seven days a week. They do it in the morning. It's a, we typically want them to, in the, I'm talking about the downtown district specifically, we want them to pick up between 4 and 6 a.m., be out no later than if they're running late, <clears throat> 7, 8 o'clock, out of the downtown so the business can happen. Our clean and safe general maintenance crew, they have a shift of 4.30 until 1 o'clock, so they make their run uh, during that time, but they have a whole long list of things that they do in addition to dealing with the, gar the receptacles. There is an issue with the receptacles because sometimes it looks like it's overflowing, but actually the, the cover and the hole, some people just drop stuff on the top and it looks like it's, it's overflowing and it's nasty. Uh, so that's a challenge and we definitely have to look at a new set of receptacles that look better and are more functional for the amount of traffic that we have in downtown. So we're looking at that as a part of it. We have uh, some officers who make an afternoon run to try to see, make sure that those receptacles are not overflowing. And we're not perfect. Sometimes we will miss uh, one or two, but we have officers who come behind our crew that they knock off at one o'clock and they'll go through at about from between two o'clock and three o'clock to just check. But definitely from a, uh, from a manpower perspective, our department will need to look at that because we have five general maintenance workers and 
it is a challenge in terms of retaining and attracting, attracting and retaining those uh, individuals because of, of the pay. Hmm. But we're also looking at how we can um, uh, make sure that we have a better coverage downtown. And, and we've uh, made some adjustments over the last several weeks. And we hear you loud and clear, and we're definitely on top of it and looking at ways that we can, can address the issue. And I appreciate the information because I, I've been out of town and I haven't been Absolutely. back since that email. And you're men and women, I, whenever like I, I go to the airport early or mm -hmm. just happen to be downtown early, they're out there. Uh, they, they, your men and women do a great job, and it's not my intent to say they don't. No, no. But I think it's a receptacle that might be the issue because they've yes. been out there not forever. <laughs> Right. <laughs> there might be better ones. So we definitely are looking at that. And well, if you're going to look at the receptacles, make sure that, because, I mean, I don't know, I just, just make sure that they're also going to be attractive because yes. if we get something down there that's not, then, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, we're going to get it from all ends on that too. Sure. Absolutely. So just, it's, it's, a, it's a balance. Did you want to say something? Yes, I wanted to. Um, in addition to not having the ability to retain, and I believe these are paid for by the CRA, if I... Some. You're, some. You're talking about the staff? Clean and staff. staff. Yes, that, that's a part of our clean and safe division, and they are, oh, it is a CRA-funded uh, crew. So maybe this is something we need to address. Or Are you hiring and put, um, setting the pay, and the CRA is just saying, okay, we'll do it? So who sets the pay? Maybe well, that's right. an HR function, uh, uh, Madam Commissioner. That's an HR function in terms of setting the pay for the category, for the uh, job description uh, okay. positions that we're hiring. So part of the process, ladies and gentlemen, as we go forward, is to work with everybody involved to engage in market analysis and make adjustments to get to that place. It's consistent with everything else. So we understand that loud and clear. We'll be making the necessary steps to go forward, and we'll look forward to a brighter day as a result. Absolutely. And I appreciate that consideration. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. The second thing, if I could, um, yeah, we had a lot of proclamations tonight. I, I see <laughs> municipal clerks, yeah. Ms. Johnson, congratulations. And we had uh, Haitian American Heritage Month, mm -hmm. uh, amongst others. But I received uh, an email from our president. And uh, this month is Jewish American Heritage Month. And uh, he signed a proclamation to that effect. Um, would I, Ms. Jellen, would I ask for consensus or would I ask for something to be on the next agenda if we could maybe adopt also having May in the city of Delray Beach Jewish American Heritage Month? You can just ask for consensus for the proclamation. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So what I'll do is should I just uh, send the language to our clerk mm -hmm. uh, who's celebrating her month as well. <laughs> and, uh, it's a big month for yes. proclamation. <laughs> And I appreciate that consideration from my colleagues. Thank you. All right. Very good. Mr. Johnson. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I had so much. I wanted to add that there are two that I'm a part of that um, should be added to that list. Um, Happy Mother's Day from the uh, Knights of Pythagoras Mentoring Network's Ladies of Distinction Day. And the uh, I'm going to say it wrong, but there's a, a sorority that's celebrating their 50th year I can tell you next time if you need to know. Um, and I kind of snuck that one in, and I didn't even get commission consent. I just went straight to the clerk, and she saw no well, reason. If it worked, do it good on yeah. you. Yeah, we, beautiful, beautiful work, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, we just can't cover enough proclamations. They love Delray Beach proclaiming things. Um, <laughs> I tried not to overwhelm my fellow commissioners, mayor and fellow commissioners, but I do want to tell you what's going on with the League of Cities, if I might. I hope that each of you got a list of the uh, legislative, I'm sorry, uh, releases of the 2022 legislative session final report. Unfortunately, we did not um, have any information about the special session that's been all in the news with uh, eliminating the Reedy Creek District, so um, stay tuned. We're doing a lot of things in this state of Florida under our legislative uh, sessions, official, normal, and extra, so stay tuned. If I can't get them all to you, I'll do my best. If you just let me know, and, and if I come across them, I do. I would like you to specifically pay attention to 
the legal report for April 2022, uh, especially the first item, uh, the city of Sunny Isles versus Ghetto, 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 uh, and the uh, guidance on web accessibility. You might find it very interesting because none of us want to be involved in those type lawsuits. The, I included the Citizen Advisory Committee on Health and Human Services, uh, Building Recovery Capital in the recover, in the Recovery Capital. Don't know what that is. It didn't say Delray Beach. I mentioned this. I'm not going to go over it again. But specifically, Mayor, I hope you do not think that I'm going to that I'm stepping on your toes. Not at all. But thank you for representing us, by the way, in the uh, Palm Beach TPA. Pleasure. The presentation by Valerie Nielsen, who loves to talk about the roads and everything else in the county. I don't know if this is the right place or time. I don't want to again step on your toes, but I'd love to see her at a workshop for if we limit her to half an hour to an hour. I know she could go on and on because there were people there who was trying to say, cut it, cut it, Valerie, but she just kept talking about the mod, mod, modal, modal? Multimodal. Mod, multimodal, and it's just fascinating as to what you're working on. And I think the citizens need to understand that we're not just sitting still. We're trying to talk about what's going on now, what's going to go on in the future. And uh, we need input from our citizens because every kind of conveyance to pedestrians, to cycles, Peds, mm -hmm. whatever you call them, skateboarders, our golf carts, everybody's out there and it's just becoming so crowded that uh, I think we, we just have to become accustomed to it and try not to run over anybody who happens to be going up the wrong side of the road on a, I think it was a six pedal unit that, and I don't remember the city that spilled over because really it's something that people who have been drinking can get on board this pedaling thing yep, and it turned that. over and people were injured and or killed so I hope that no one ever comes to Delray asking for that. We actually that did. Would be the, we turned yeah, we, it down. We said no. Oh, yeah. We did? Yeah. Okay, wait before my time. I'm thankful that I didn't have to <laughs> make that boat. So that's all I have. I thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Mr. Boylston? I just have two two quick things. Um, would we be able, to, and I'm sure this is already planned, but to have a recap of the appropriations? Um, I know it was mentioned tonight, but it would be nice to kind of look back. Um, I'm the, sure. You mean the goal setting? At the goal? Mm -hmm. where, where are you thinking about? Just any time or? Just in, just in general okay. for the com, you know, for the community and for us. If I may, sir. I'm sure Matt would probably like to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Arrangements are being made for June 7th. I described the, a note of, to this effect in the information letter report a few weeks ago, so we will have Matt Forrest here. Great. We're also asking, inviting members of the state legislative delegation to participate as well. So that specific exercise will take place at that time, and I think we'll be all set to cover those points. I figured that, I figured that was in motion. Yes, sir. Um, a few meetings ago, we had representatives from the Haitian Caribbean community here in Delray Beach come forward in regards to the request for a Haitian Caribbean uh, Resource Center or Community Center. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to sit down with any of these leaders and talk about what their vision is for that, um, but it is something that was uh, had a lot of steam prior to, prior to COVID. Luckily, a private donor stepped in and gave them a temporary space for two years. Those two years are coming up. They flew uh, fast. Um, it was surprising to me, for me to hear that um, the county, Palm Beach County, does not have one of these resource centers. Um, probably the best example, if you want to do any research, is Santala, uh, which I had an opportunity to go down and see down in Miami. Um, it was, it, it's a building that was either provided or built by the, by the city, um, but then a nonprofit is housed inside. And, and basically what they do is they... They're not really creating, at the beginning, they're not creating additional resources. What they are doing is that they're cu cultivating resources that already exist out there, programs that already exist, and, and put in, pairing them with someone that speaks Creole, putting them in a environment or a small community center that is inviting. Um, you know, a lot, of a lot of members of the Haitian Caribbean community don't want to walk into a courthouse, don't want to walk into a, 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 city, a city hall. 
but they are comfortable walking into a Haitian Caribbean resource center with someone that you know, speaks the language that they speak um, to find out about all the programs that already exist, no new programs, just existing uh, uh, pro programs and to get assistance. Um, their vision is a you know three to 4,000 square foot. And not, when we usually hear community center, we think like Pompeii Park and we think gins and we think that, that that's not what they want. They want just a small space for their community, not only in Delray Beach, but for our county, because it would be the first of its kind. Um, county Commissioner Mac Bernard is um, in, in favor of this. Um, he is willing to come to the table and hopefully be an advocate for this to be in Delray Beach. Um, and I was just putting this forward because I'd like to see it discussed in our, in our annual goal setting, if possible. I, our goal setting's only one day this year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a challenge. I mean, I, why don't we put it on the next consent agenda or the next agenda under the commission comments cause, because that's our new rule and provide the information and do a presentation. I would love to see something for the Haitian community because I agree. But I feel like we create our own division if we don't try to incorporate them into Pompeii Park when we're building this big, amazing facility. So my feeling is I love the idea of having those resources. I would like those resources centrally located and not separated from the rest of the city. I, I'd, I'd like to so, talk about that. So I'll say that, that it's not like they're requesting a new building, they're requesting a place. Right now, actually, they're, they're able to have, I don't know if you've ever been to one of their meetings, but it's, in, it's off of Swinton in a city building. Um, is where we currently we currently host, and they can have their their monthly meetings. This was pre, this was pre COVID. I don't think we can continue to just toss things into Pompeii. You know, there's a lot going on over there. Well, the question the the conversation would not be about building a new building. It, it is about finding them a home in maybe in an, an existing mm -hmm. uh, building. You know, something that the city already already has. But it would be an established. Asian Caribbean Resource Center. You okay, know, I'm sorry. I'm, I thought the last time they were here, they were talking potentially about uh, using the parcel on the corner of um, they actually, Lake Ida. They have presented the, Bolin, the actual the building that the Boland Center. Right. Is. Correct. Correct. So I would agree to put it on the agenda under your commission presentation and have it come up at the next meeting. I'm good with that. Yeah. Okay. We'll discuss. Is that okay? Because I just. I don't know how we're, we're supposed to be discussing at goal setting, which I don't even know. I met with the facilitator. I'm not fair, certain there's going to be enough time between going over the things that we'd like to establish with Anthea and discussing the direction um, that I brought up with Mr. Moore last month. I feel like in one day, I don't know how we're going to do all of this. I'm fine with you know okay. discussing it uh, as, a, as an item. Part. I think it's a great idea to you know have more discussion about it because again yeah. i don't know that like we, we only have so many resources so to build a building is is kind of outside of i think what we can really do when we're talking about there's not enough resources right now to do what we need to do just on you know things that that are well, already I, the i'll just end with this is a um very important part of our community that has been here from day one or before day one well, of, i don't think of, anybody of up here no, is no, i know i know of delray beach and every election cycle, um, they are engaged, you know, for their for their votes. And I don't see the city of Delray Beach um, really stepping forward, really stepping forward and providing. They don't that th that community doesn't ask for much. How often I've been here, you know, up here for four years. I think that's the first time they've come up collectively and asked for anything. Um, they're actually, you know, the Haitian Caribbean community are usually, you know, serving, not a not asking. So. I do think it's a big enough initiative to be on our, our annual agenda, really looking at CIP projects and w whether that should be added to it. But if the consensus is to add it as a, as a presentation of some kind, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to Right, because it almost falls into what we do with the nonprofits. And I, frankly, to be very honest, haven't even finished that entire binder. So I really, listen, I'm all in favor. I don't like when you correlate it to elections because that sounds, that doesn't make me feel more comfortable doing it. It makes me feel less, to be honest with you. But I don't disagree with you. It's a large percentage of our population and they should be equally served. So the question is, how do we do that? But we're also using taxpayer money. And so I think it's an important discussion and I'm willing to have it. 
may I, may I just check? We're about to do some very wonderful things with the uh, CRA with uh, 95, I might get the numbers wrong, 98 Northwest oh, yeah. Fifth Avenue and 95 Southwest Fifth Avenue. Perhaps since that's in the community, perhaps that could be some space and I don't know how much, because everyone wants to have it as a startup or small business or whatever. Um, and maybe with some of these odd lots, that would be something we could do. Um, I was not in favor of the, uh, they weren't looking at May Volan. I, from my interaction, they wanted a building built on the vacant property well, there was one where the community time, trees are. about May Volan, and I think that that was back, okay. um, they never or, did talk about it. Yeah, it was it was just, a while ago, but that was because of the building. fact that I think May Volan was, um, there was a question as to whether or not, who we were we serving there, there was all these questions. But when you finally came out with how important May Volan is to to right. providing services for our community, that it just went off the plate there. So and it that's was, when it shifted It was a grand over. building. They didn't want yeah, something small. Yeah, then it was shifted small, over so. into that, that where the community center for the seniors was supposed to go. So right. we've been all over the place. We don't have a plan. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's important for us to discuss it. So well, let's take let's well, the time you to do that. Mayor. And because for the discussion. space yeah. for tennis players and golfers and artists and and business owners, you know, right. with the chamber, which we, you know, give yeah. them for a dollar square foot or whatever. We do have dedicated spaces. For no, I think aspects. we all are in agreement. But for the meeting, perhaps we should know what the capacity you're looking at, how many people, what the services they're going to going to need. Because in order to find that space, we have need a broader idea I of the service. I can and and get all that information. And yeah. it's not, you know, me, you know. Sounds good. Good. Otherwise, we'll prepare for May 17th, sir. Okay. Anything Thank you. Else? No, that was it. Okay. So I've got two things um, on our June schedule in the middle of the month when I thought we were kind of taking off. I see a workshop, a budget workshop. That would be June 14th. There'll be a brief presentation. July, are you referring to? So the first budget presentation will take place July 12th, Madam Mayor. All right. Let me take a look here. I think it was like... Only meetings in the month of June will take place June 7th and June 14th. Okay, let me see. All right, June 7th and June 14th. Okay, and then July, here it is, July 20, June 28th. June 28th, that will be modified. We're looking to take that to July 12th. Okay, because that's what's on my schedule, and I'm going, that's right smack dab in the middle of where we were taking that time off. That was on a preliminary basis, okay. and that's being clarified. So again, June 7th, June 14th, our meetings, regular meetings and workshop, June 14th, and the first budget presentation will take place July 12th. Fine. So we'll be updating sure the calendar to be clear. So I, I just wanted to make sure you knew that uh, I don't think anybody's going to be here for that. But oh, and I understand yeah. that, and I've made arrangements administratively, but I'm glad to have that clarification this evening. You so got it. Thank and you. then the second thing I wanted to mention is, speaking of all these you know, days, um, we've got Firefighter uh, Appreciation Day tomorrow, and I have to say thank you very much. I spent, um, oh, I want to say four hours at least, of my day doing a tour of all the firehouses and I think some of you guys have signed up to do that as well. Uh, well worth your time, a very educational, you're going to learn a lot and uh, probably um, when we start talking about, and this is the reason why I'm looking at you know, um, some of the requests, it's like we're just behind the eight ball here and um, it's, it's really scary. So when you start to see what our employees are having to live in and deal with, um, we really have to have a plan and a schedule to start addressing those things too. And these are not small ticket items. But regardless, um, eye opener today, hopefully you all will take that uh, tour and, and see what I saw. But thank you very much. And uh, I hope your firefighters have a great day for the appreciation day tomorrow. They certainly deserve it. That's it. Madam Mayor. One more, oh, One more right. thing. Meeting adjourned. Madam Mayor. Wait, wait, wait. Madam Mayor. Oh. <laughs> One more thing. Oh, yes. Um, I didn't I, hear you. Okay. I'm sorry. I just um, want to see consensus from the commission. Um, we were asked for another proclamation. It's National Tennis Month, and it's not on our approved list. And as uh, Deputy Vice Mayor Cassell well, shared, I was surprised we she didn't to. just <laughs> jump right in when uh, the vice mayor was talking. But uh, anyway, now I see she's got you doing her dirty work. No. So anyway, yes. I'll, no, I knew I'll, it was coming. Okay. So we just wanted to make sure that we can add that. It'll yeah, be on the next one. Fine meeting. with me. Thank, Thank you, you so much.